Zuka shows, you know, he he is still there. He is 100% still in the picture. And if, yeah, that hot streak is anything to show for, he is going to be one of the ones to look out for today. Keenan, you and I have been watching this all season long. Mm -hmm. Who do you got, my man? Who, who do you think is going to win most likely? And if there's anybody special in your heart, who do you have? My headset's got to be one of the top three. And, like, I really want to pick one driver, but I can't. It's it, When it comes to those top three guys, they all have buys in the top eight. Uh, they only have to win really two battles, two or three battles. Uh, they have an easier road than everybody else. Um, Mystified and Preston, obviously, are going to be your two favorites. They've been super, super, super consistent. Uh, but can't count Bouquet out, though. But, but, <laughs> Mahort... <laughs> My, my little heart is going, my, my, me. It's my boy, Ueno. It's my boy, Ueno. He's been on fire. He's, the I believe, I, in my opinion, the most improved out of everybody in this field this year. Um, and this track suits him. And this track is very similar to Suzuka, but there is catch-up zones. There is places to make up mistakes when it comes to lack of speed. But... That Alpha is so fast. That car is so fast. I don't know what he did to it. Um, so if not a win, expect to see a lot of our JSI members in the end, uh, in their end game here. Uh, but yeah, I can't really choose a odds on favorite, but my heart's going with the win. I hate to put the pressure on the boy, but uh, uh, Mamma Mia, Papa Pia. I don't know what rhymes with Pia. But <laughs> yeah. I had a plan and I fell, <laughs> I fell apart. But... <laughs> We're going to get a lot of Italian references today, aren't we? Uh, no, because I haven't had my coffee yet. But we'll see. <laughs> the wind's got to come to you with a little bit of caffeine. Hey, I see yeah. how it is. Somebody get me my cello! Oh, here it is. Anyways, I'm going to carry it on, guys. My odds on favorite, I think, for this round, it, uh, it, it has to be mystified in just the fact that his consistency with his angle and, and his speed. He, he may have one of the lower horsepower cars out here compared to most, but the things that he does with that S chassis are just unmatched by so many different drivers. I think he is feeling it right now. He's been mentioned. He's been mentioning it all month long. He, he is ready. I think this is going to be the round. He's going to staple himself as a 2019 ESDA champion. But looking at this bracket, uh, I, I am absolutely split, split right now because I, I think there are two in my heart that I think could be doing something here. I, I'm going to be taking... It's a little bit of a hot take here, Keenan. You're not ready for this one. Uh -huh. my, my heart says I think Vicari may be the dark horse today. Possible. Not uh, impossible. Lo 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 looking at the top left of the bracket, he's going up against Crypto versus Vicari. It's going to be a coin flip, but I think if you can get past him, a track like this suits style. It's got just enough sweeping corners and just enough slowness to it where you don't need to be crazy fast to be good here but you can you can really do some things in that lead with angle that many are not going to be able to do in chase if they're not ready for it i think if vicari's on his game today he might be the one if he takes down mystified i i don't see anybody taking this guy down he I, he he has been so good throughout the season in parts where he shines and and outrun and esca and other tournaments but like it, it, if, if today is the day i think vicari's going to do something and and, and i i truly think that this could be it. I, I, he may be that Dark Horse 2019 ESDA champion. Yeah, that is not something. That is something to uh, to factor in as the momentum. If 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 Vicari can take out Mystified, I think that is going to be the deciding battle on that side of the bracket at least. Um, if he can get that done, anything's possible for that guy. Anything, anything can happen at that point. Yeah, well, you're looking at it on your screen, guys. Just a couple of seconds time till we get this party started. Thank you so much for tuning in today for our ESCA 2019 pre-show for that championship round. It has been myself, Ian Plash, Keenan Kusin, James Pike, and Elizabeth down here with us, breaking it all down and making it happen out here for the last 30 minutes or so. We appreciate you all and your support today. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, the 2019 ESDA Championship starts in just a couple of seconds.
So, you thought that the last five rounds were a battle? You haven't seen anything yet, for the war is here. Esports Drift Association Championship Playoff starts right now. Right now. Right now. Oh, Cisco, you have to change cars. With five rounds of stiff competition in the rear view, the Esports Drift Association returns to Magellan for the first time this year to bring you the most high stakes, no holds barred drift competition Forza has ever seen. 14 drivers have clawed their way into this, the final round of the 2019 campaign to fight for the honor of being crowned the 2019 ESDA champion. The scenario was simple, win, and you have your name etched into the history books, along with the best of the best. Lose and wait another year to chase the glory of sharing the title of champion with Drift's elite drivers. Who has what it takes to rise to the top when the pressure is on, unlike ever before? Well, there is only one way to find out. The drivers are ready, the track is ready, production staff is ready. Question looming, are you welcome one welcome all this is it keenan we are finally here championship playoff competition is underway the lobby has loaded and drivers are working their way to the starting line it's on my man it is on ian i've been waiting all year to say this championship implications <laughs> are abound here ladies and gentlemen but again this is a very very unique format to what we do yes we did have championship points yes we did have a bunch of rounds throughout the year but this is a winner take all all or nothing playoff style event you win here you win the whole darn thing baby yeah as i had just mentioned a minute ago the pressure of today has to be at a level that these drivers have probably never contended with many drift tournaments you go into these finals you go into the, this this scenario there's already a, a point scenario set out and ready to go there's already odds on favorites there's guys who just need to win one battle to be the champion or simply show up like grousey did last year to be the champion this year it's the final round you have to be perfect today a single tire drop can ruin your entire season keenan it sure can ian but we are getting underway right away jsi preston is lined up for his by run preston having the the uh, the blessing of finishing second in the points through the regular season getting one of our three by runs into the great eight um two or three of them are jsi members but all preston needs to do here to give himself a fighting chance here at this championship which he is one of our favorites for, is to make sure he does not get to tire off course, which is, this should be a great way to show you this track in action here. Entering here in this first corner, we're going to be one wanting to watch people, making sure they stay in the inside of the corner, transitioning into turn two. You will I'd see being seen contact there. Going to want to watch these front tires on that rumble strip. Then this power alley, you get a very important place to keep as much speed as you can. And they're going to be seeing people push wide, getting to that orange zone on that wall. Not quite pressing gets there. We had time, but he ends up scraping that big wing in the GTR again. We're going to be seeing people touch, touch that wall. We might be seeing people get a little bit too saucy. But that is your track. That will be your track for this round here of ESDA at Mugello Circuit. Yeah, so that is going to be Preston's Byron. He'll be seeing his way into the grade eight. And now we have our first battle of the championship round online and ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is <laughs> JSI Nando versus TSC Cookie. Both of these drivers are really, really good when it comes down to the style and the angle. I've been watching them time and time again, doing many things that you would not expect. 
out of many drivers. They are stylish. They've driven some odds on cars, this time a little more meta with these BMWs. But now, these two JSI drivers going at it for the first battle of 2019 championship playoffs. JSI Nando in lead. Cookie and Chase. There's the initiation for Nando. Not quite down on that rumble strip, which is a little bit wide, but really losing out in proximity in Chase. Unfortunately, it's Cookie. He's going to close it in nicely for that second corner as they work their way now through that power alley. The gap has been here for almost the entirety of this battle. Nando really doing a half, well, a very decent job on the bottom half portion of this course, rather. And really, Cookie just not in the picture for the entirety of that battle, at least to a championship caliber performance that you would expect in a round like this. Ian, if you look closely on turn number one, you did see Cookie kind of get baited by that gap he had with Nando. Nando hitting that corner basically the way exactly how you want him to. Cookie, it looked like he tried to gain a little bit of proximity, but it ended up pushing him wide coming in the exit of turn one. That place that I told you guys that you're going to be wanting to look for today. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like he really had the momentum or the line to gain up that proximity. And then when he had to go into turn one, he went a little bit shallow, a little bit early. Um, to try to gain up on Nando. Nando just putting down a championship caliber run. We didn't really quite see him get to the wall um, in the zone required, but um, small, tiny, little complaint uh, when it comes to how good that lead run was. Definitely still points on the board. Definitely still not impossible for Cookie, um, but he's going to need to put down a solid run here. Yeah, Cookie is a good driver. The, he, he knows how to get it done, as I mentioned before earlier. I think if he can get down to that inner clip, in turn one, you know, those points were left open a little bit. A little bit wide in the lead was Nando. We'll see what Cookie's got in his lead. I apologize for the JSI team, by the way. He is still TSC Cookie. Here we go. Second half of your first battle. Initiation for Cookie. A lot closer to proximity as Nando. This time, Cookie getting down to that inner clip very well, painting that white line along that rumble strip. Transitions to oh, the second cookie, corner. Cookie, cookie, running cookie. it wide onto the rumble. Tire into the grass for Cookie. Running through the power alley. A very fatal mistake potentially for Cookie in his lead run. Cutting onto the rumble in chase is Nando closing back in, showing a gap now at the end of the run as well. Cookie pull out all the way out to that outside wall. Touches the right rear bumper against the concrete and finishes out the run. Well, unfortunately, Ian, I don't know really have much to say. Um, just trying to carry a bit too much speed. Maybe just got a little intimidated by Nando and trying to run away from him. Ended up carrying way too much speed into that second corner. Um, Nando did kind of what, what you wanted to do in that fall position. Didn't really try to push too hard. Just stayed on his line. Uh, had confidence in the speed of his own car. Um, ended up paying off for him. Again, uh, Cookie looked like he went a little bit wide, but didn't want to drop the speed. And uh, unfortunately, we get to see one tire in the grass from him in the BMW M4. Yeah, we saw Nando's lead. You know, it, it wasn't uh, with a mistake. There were no drops. He was playing it safe, but there are definitely points on the board available for Cookie in his lead. But unfortunately, that tire drop may spell disaster for Cookie's championship run. Uh, a very good run all in all up until that drop. You can see it on the transition for turn two. He just runs it a little too deep. Ran it wide, catches that left rear into the grass just beyond that rumble strip on the left-hand side of the course. Judges Ooh. looking over this replay now to determine if they have a winner. But both battles you can see on screen. It, it was all in all a pretty close battle when you really think about it, but just, yeah, that tire drop, it's going to be rough to overcome. Yeah, that's only one major deduction out of both drivers. Good angle from Cookie up until that point. It's Again, like you said, he was on one. Um, kind of was doing everything he needed to do, especially in that hairpin, uh, that uh, sweeper corner, that last corner. Uh, and Cookie hitting that wall very well as well. Just waiting on a call from our judges. Okay, let's clarify a couple of things in chat here. So we, um, there we go. Okay, so Dai is bringing down the decision. Now it looks like decision may be being made here for our first battle in top 16 for the championship playoff between TSC Cookie and JSI Nando. Which one of these two are going on to that grade 8 to take on Preston in the grade 8? Is it going to be TSC Cookie? Is it going to be an all JSI battle, Ian? Are we going to see one of our JSI guys fall victim very early on? Yeah, still judges definitely talking about it. And to be fair, you know, this is it. This is top 16. You got to make sure every single judging contention point can be discussed thoroughly. You know, you absolutely need to get these calls right. So end of the day, they probably are looking at maybe something that could offset that tire drop. Maybe there were things in Cookie's lead in other sections of the course that just all in all were doing better for Nando. Remember, there was that extreme loss of proximity at the end of the run where Nando really dropped off in the second half of the final corner. That could be a point of contention here where the judges are talking through. Possibly. And I mean...
I didn't really see anything, but I also was out all night, so. <laughs> it's okay, we just gotta get your eyes warmed up, is all. Yeah, it's yeah. All right, decision has been made. JSI Nando is advancing to the grade eight, and that is going to be TSC Cookies 2019 campaign done and dusted. Congratulations to both drivers in the first battle, but JSI Nando is going to be advancing face JSI Preston. Yeah, just smart driving from Nando. Uh, but unfortunately, I think that's what we're going to have to see up until it comes to gut check time. Uh, we're really going to have to see people trying to overcome uh, adversity here. G great run from Cookie. Um, honestly, if this was top 32 in a regular event, I would have said he could have made up that mistake. But uh, unfortunately, top 16, best of the best, world finals. Uh, this is not a place you can do that. So unfortunately, Cookie will be knocked out. We will be seeing an all JSI battle. Only two will enter. Only one will go make it to the top four. But Ian, we I think are having another buy run. Yeah, TSC Twisty unfortunately had to back out late in the going this morning or last night. So that is going to be giving them the third seed, Axi Bouquet, a buy run. You'll be advancing then to the gray eight for the bottom half of the right side bracket. Driving the Ferrari, usually the Mustang driver. Busting out the new chassis here for the final round. And to see what he has in store with us in this chassis. Seeing a lot of guys running the Ferrari engine, but I really haven't seen a ton actually running the Ferrari chassis. So maybe he's figured out something here for this final that will be a benefit to him over that Mustang. Ian, this car used to be so meta. Oh, gosh. Especially last year. Very, very meta vehicle. Um, but we're seeing him whip it out. Saved his car change. For the absolutely last opportunity. And a good run from Bouquet. He is moving on. And now, I think this is going to be a good one. I know I said that about the last one, but I think <laughs> this is going to be a good one. Yep, this is going to be Smarmy Binky, your sixth seed versus JSI Reed. This is going to be R32 versus RX7 Battle as the first one on the bottom half of Ooh. the right side of the bracket. Binky back in the R32. Good for him. I know he's running that uh, that new GTR for some most of the year, but he's back in the R32. We see him. I see him run this car a lot in practice. And right. Reeb, I think the only rotary in today's competition. So all my Dorito boys, I'm going to see some hype in the chat. Yeah, I believe so. Nirvana did change cars, so he would have been the other. Mm -mm. Right, 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 right. But uh, yeah, Nirvana is out of the RX-7. This is one of the only uh, only FD in the competition, I believe, today. Smarmy Binky in the lead. Reeb and Chase. Here we go for the second battle of Top 16. Initiation for Binky into Turn 1 with the flick all Ooh, over the door. Yeah. Chase is Reeb. Pushes into the tires. That is how you put on the pressure. Transitioning across the bomber for the second corner. Binky trying to run away here through the power alley. But that RX-7 cannot be denied in Chase. Getting super aggressive in on the door again for the last corner, matching that angle perfectly as Binky runs it out all the way to the wall. This was a battle. Reeb has <laughs> arrived. I mean, if you're going to show up, this is the best event to do that. Um, Smarmy, Ian, if you just look at his, his initiation, just looks a little late. I don't know what it, what, why. But it looked like he wavered a little bit, maybe hesitated a little bit. And Reeb, spilling blood in the water, just grabbed him by the throat and made a statement in that fellow position. You can grab it a little bit of rumble, but that is okay. And never lost Binky. Would have liked to see him get a little bit more angle, but never lost that proximity. There, there, there is no such thing as looking over a driver here in this battle. As we had said from the beginning, if you're the first seed, the 14th seed, the 13th seed, it does not matter. All these drivers are at a championship caliber. Reeb may be the 11th seed on paper, but that was a top-tier performance out of Reeb. You would expect absolutely nothing else. And now both drivers are going to switch around. This is Reeb's chance to throw down a good lead. Binky needs to put on that proximity and chase after the follow Reeb just threw down. What does Binky have? What does Reeb have? Here we go, second half of this battle. Initiation for Reeb runs it. Binky oh, getting into the door as well. Kind of charges a little bit late though through the center of the corner and starts losing out for the second half. Reeb pulling away through the power alley. Now all the way out to the rumble. Here comes Binky back in chase, getting super aggressive in the last corner. Look at that angle by the FD in the lead. Binky pushing at the very end. Oh, Reeb still out to the wall. Oh. Hits the wall hard. That is a big mistake for Reeb in the lead position. As we mentioned before earlier, that wall will bite you. Is that going to offset? Every single advantage Reeb just gained in his lead and chase. What a mistake for Reeb in the, the final corner. 
Again, we're always going to have to make sure that we, we, we wait for all the details to come out, especially with stuff like that. It could have been a lag hit, um, especially with both these drivers. I do believe living in completely different um, areas of the world. Again, this tournament is taking place over, uh, over online connections. But Smarmy has the stream open, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. Because I think he took what he said he and was like, Okay, you want to play rough? You want to play rough, my friend? And basically went tit for tat exactly with Reed. Maybe not as consistent on turn one with his proximity, but did the uh, did the did cleaned it up throughout the rest of the run and was right there on him, matching angle on turn three. And then Binky, from what we see on camera, Ian, looked like he just wanted to grab a bit too much of that wall, was carrying a little bit too much speed. Uh, and then obviously Binky nowhere to go. Yeah, Reeb definitely shelled out an angle for the last. You can see the trajectory of the car pointing towards that wall. That's the decision going to be made. Ladies and gentlemen, Smarmy Binky will be given the win over JSI Reeb, and that has to hurt for Reeb. He was on the cusp of most likely advancing from this battle, but you cannot sleep on any section of this course. One mistake spells disaster as Binky runs into our gate car. Again, Ian, what we're seeing today is... All we said at the top of the broadcast, one mistake is all it takes. Mm -hmm. I know it was very spectacular, uh, and it looked huge on, on, on screen, but what happened there was one little mistake. He was two or three miles an hour, just a little bit too fast, ended up grabbing that wall. And now, unfortunately, JSI Reeb's uh, championship hopes have been dashed. Um, you got to imagine he'll be pulling for Binky throughout the rest of the competition to uphold his honor. But now all JSI battle blue, white, and gray is these two cars GTR versus M3, V6 versus V10. All right, second seed Preston, Nando and Chase, JSI versus JSI oh, wow. Bagel. Oh, oh wow. wow, Bagel for the lead. Preston makes a correction in the center of the corner, almost running off that rumble and into the grass, but makes a nice correction, but that is a big mistake for his lead. Nando, not quite there on proximity and Chase, but lots of angle for that GTR up in the lead. The proximity and Chase just not there through and through. Preston, solid run other than that one mistake in turn one. Yeah, and we saw him grab a little bit of that green area on that rumble strip. Gotta double check, make sure that is a zone that you can put, uh, put your car in. But, like we said, Nando, it looked like he played a little bit safe. Didn't really see the angle from him. Maybe he has his car set up. Oh, <laughs> they're drifting on the way back. <laughs> Maybe he had his car set up for speed rather than the big angle, but Preston um, looked like he had the speed and the angle. So Nando, on the, on the back foot there, Nando has been... Uh, the staple figurehead of Team JSI, for as long as JSI has been around, uh, is the student going to slay the master here? Interesting to see. I do not believe that green section is allowed. Rumbles are, but I believe the green and the grass are beyond the limits of this layout. Don't quote me, but I believe that is uh, beyond the limits. So that could be a big drop in Nando, maybe just playing it safe, knowing that there could be a pretty big advantage to be had for the second half of this battle after that mistake by Preston is the second seed and the only two-time winner about to bow out. Still so much left to go with this battle. So much can happen. Really, really quickly. As well. Oh, no, it's, it was fixed. It was fixed. Never mind. Continue. So, I just want to say it was JSI Preston, not TSC Preston. That's <laughs> a JSI Preston in chase. JSI Nando up in front with the initiation. Preston throwing in the angle in chase. Nando maybe a little bit wide on the exit of one. Transitions for two. The speed oh. is not quite there in the lead. Lots of style, though, and Preston really here for the pressure in chase. Bam! Angle into the final corner for Nando. Look at that style into the final corner. And Preston will match it on the back half as well. What a saucy lead for Nando on the back half of this course, Keenan. Ian, I think Nando did everything he could have could have done for himself uh, to keep himself still alive in this competition. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I really want need you to look at Preston's turn two. Just look like the car did not get set to angle. Looked like there was a little bit of uh, I don't want to say understeer, but. Just didn't look like the car set to the angle that he wanted it to. Um, maybe got a little bit pinched off by Nando, but Nando definitely saved the best for last. Absolutely throwing that angle on, keeping the power planted. You can't hear it in the in the replay, but yeah. just was bouncing off the rev limiter up into the wall. But it is not going to be enough. J.S. Di Preston is advancing into the final four. He is the first driver who has worked his way into the final lobby of today.
Yeah, I think unfortunately just uh, maybe that lack of angling in this probably what did have been. Um, that was the only thing I really saw missing from Nando up until that last corner, of course. Um, but when Preston was going to match uh, proximity with Nando, he was matching proximity, line, and angle. And Nando just seemed like he was just matching the proximity. Um, really needed to pour a little bit more angle, I think, in the in his especially in his chase. All right, so one more battle left of this lobby. This is going to be X E Bouquet versus Smarmy Binky. And here's the thing. That bottom right-hand side of the corner, as Pike was mentioning before earlier, Dark Horse laying potentially in Exi Bouquet, but you got to remember as well, Smarmy Binky is another Dark Horse. Could this be the true battle of the Dark Horses, Pike? Potentially, potentially. Binky's first run really, really impressed me. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was, but I don't know. This There's so much that I don't think you could predict here just because of the pressure and just because this is not a situation that a lot of these drivers have been in, especially with this much on the line. So I think there's an element of anything can happen, but only one way to find out, right? Oh, and we're about to find out just that in a couple of seconds. Both drivers lining up, getting set and ready to go. Axie representatives, Bouquet up in the lead. And I believe Smarmy Binky is still a privateer. Somebody picked this man up already for the love of God. Binky and the R32 will be giving chase to Bouquet in the lead for the first half of the final battle of this lobby in the grade eight. Will it be Bouquet? Will it be Binky Keenan? Oh, Ian, I don't know, Bouquet, that Ferrari might be the difference maker coming into turn one here. We're going to see his first Ooh. battle action. A little bit of wavering from Binky. Bouquet nice and smooth up there in that V12. Oh! Binky just over-rotating. He's losing all the gap, Ian. He's got to be able to gain this thing, uh, this game's gap back. Bouquet up in the lead position, really just having to set sail and bring that boat across the finish line, not really getting to that outside Man. line. But Binky with a disaster of a run. That's definitely not what he wanted. He seemed to have maybe gotten a little too aggressive in one, transitions for two, trying to match what that Ferrari was doing. And there was a really weird bottle. I wonder if Binky's kind of kind of bringing it up. He is also calling lag. He, he is calling it. XE Bouquet, uh, potential lag. You can see it on the replay. The car does this really weird flick to angle. And it looks like Binky went in to match it. And then suddenly the car goes straight back out. It snaps back to the left. So there could have been an instance of lag that could have been more prominent on the side of the actual client side the server side with binky what we're seeing in uh spectate is not necessarily what the drivers are seeing and it looks like bouquet actually knows what could have caused it as well from what i see and it looks like just maybe the rumble strip affected him because mm -hmm. he got right up on the rumble strip and then all of a sudden just slipped off yeah, no, I, I I see that as well. I I watched it in the first run. It was like uh, both drivers going to talk it through, but Bouquet definitely knows. Uh, he he knows what caused it. It looks like Binky did make that mistake in one. That can't be understated. He didn't. And uh, yeah, they're going to go ahead and really quickly call that rerun. So good on them. One thing I need to give credit for: we saw it happening over at Sonoma as well. Bouquet is definitely one of the the most gentleman competitors we have out here. Always working with the other driver in situations. We saw what happened between him and I believe it was Ink. At Sonoma, where they they, they talked it through with to try the, to uh, work with with the, the proper tire decision. Debacle. Yeah. So once again, shout out to Bouquet for for being a gentleman and and letting him settle it the proper way. It looks like Bouquet knows what caused the lag, and maybe he was able to fix that on his end. So we're gonna get a proper battle this time around. Yeah, it looks like Bouquet is calling some form of an issue here, saying uh he needs like a couple of minutes here. There's some high latency going on in his end. So uh, as soon as we know exactly what's happening, we will let you know. Uh, we could be seeing a situation where this lobby maybe needs to be abandoned, and then they're going to move this battle into the next one. So real quick, we're going to go ahead and talk about a couple of things coming up here on the Podium Esports side of things here. What is going on in Podium Esports land, Pike, in the next coming, coming days here? What is going on in Podium Esports land? Pretty simple answer. This Sunday night, which is tomorrow all of a sudden, wild to think about. We've got the iRacers Lounge Podcast Oval Series from Dover International Speedway. First time we've had a race in that series line up IRL with the cup race that's going to be run at dover that afternoon we go green 8 30 p.m eastern on the podium esports twitch channel that's twitch.tv forward slash podium esports uh, and should be a lot of fun it's the class b and the class c trucks well class b cars class c trucks racing at the same time on the same track multi-class oval racing which you don't see in real life but we do it here at podium esports because we're just a little bit mad a little bit mad. <laughs> 
And so if you want to catch some of that action, as we said before, www.twitch.tv slash Podium Esports. Podium Esports, the official provider of the broadcast for the 2019 ESDA campaign. Our special thanks to them for all they have done throughout this year. Looks like UK has called that. The connection is probably stable now. We're going to try this once again. All right, attempt number two. Again, that first run is moot. We're going to try this all over again. Binky having a second lease in life here. Bouquet entering. Oh. Very good proximity from that R32, but very smooth up there is that Ferrari that we did expect that from him. And as soon as you get on the gas of that car, checking out. Binky is keeping the proximity, but he's having to work very hard to do oh, so. Pushing, 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 pushing. R32. Actually, Ian, I do think he was on the preferred line there. I think it was Bouquet, the one that went shallow. Yeah, no, you can definitely see the difference between these two chassis as you mentioned before. Bouquet gets on that throttle when that car checks out. You'll see on the replay, especially coming into the power alley section out of turn two, when Bouquet was on power, that R32 just could not match. Definitely there on proximity to turn one. Very, very clean run up until that point. But as soon as Bouquet decides it's time to go, that Ferrari grips up, starts pulling away. And you may be correct in saying that Bouquet may be a little bit shallow. Binky pushing it out all the way out. But again, not really necessarily matching Bouquet. But yeah, Bouquet really late getting to that outside zone. So points on the table for Binky's lead uh, could be a potential fatal mistake on Bouquet's end. Honestly, yeah, I do think Binky played it smart there. You, what you want to do, again, for those who are uh, a little bit unfamiliar to competitive drifting, what you want to do is, even if that lead car is making a mistake, you want to follow him through on that mistake. But Binky, a little bit different, just went, I'm going to stay on my line, uh, and got out to that outer zone when you're supposed to get to that outer zone. Wonder, really wondering how curious how the judges are going to call that. But they're switching positions again. They're switching back up. That Ferrari is in the chase position. Big tire. Uh, on that car, a little bit more difficult to adjust your speed, so he's going to be really relying on Binky being nice and smooth up in the lead position right now. Actually, a lot of lack of angle for Bouquet oh. position from that Ferrari moving into the second half of the corner. Big angle from that R32, leaving the door wide open for Bouquet to close the gap, though. No, not as much angle at all from that Ferrari, but he's close, but oh. he's close enough, painting the wall with that, with that uh, army green was Binky Binky making up for that first run that ended up getting rerun oh did we just see our third seed have a issue there there is a potential it looks like binky he, he was on the more of a correct line for the final corner but definitely maybe not getting out to the wall where that orange bit is at the start of the zone but he was definitely out to the outer zone three in a more correct position than bouquet was and bouquet making a similar mistake in the final corner in chase where he starts kind of pushing out wide late and losing out in that proximity and also maybe paying a little too much respect in turn one as well just not initiating on the door of binky the gap was being shown he got the jump off the line there there could be a call on this one but my heart is kind of saying omt on this one a little bit uh, mm. it really all depends on uh what they're gonna call on the the, the run here because there's definitely different points where the chase was better on one, the chase was better on the other, but really I think this battle may come down to lead for lead, and if that's the case, I might have just eaten my own words there. <laughs> there. There could be an odds on favor, but again, we're not the judges here. We're going to see what they have to say here. I mean, Ian, my whole thing oh. for that whole that follow run is Bouquet just didn't seem like he was on it. Well, a call has been made. They are going again! Swamry Binky versus XC Bouquet. OMT has been called the first OMT of the championship final. All right, they're going to get wrapped up again. I think Bouquet really definitely has to clean up his chase. We, we didn't see him have a lot of angle. He was there in proximity, which is what that Ferrari is built for. That car is basically built for speed. Um, need to see him pull a little bit more angle, I think, and a little bit more smoothness. Um, Binky has got to clean it up himself just a little bit more. Um, very, very close are both these guys in skill level. But... Um, that's why I like one more time. So you have you have a little bit more seat time against the guy. Um, you have a little bit more um, experience now, and you kind of know how he drives. And we're going to be able to see these guys clean up their acts and see what they can do. Yeah, one more time, as you mentioned before, the first OMT of the championship final. Xi Bouquet getting a second chance on his lead run. He needs to clean up that line. 
There needs to be better proximity and chase for Binky. He's going to do just that in the first half of turn number one, matching those tires beautifully. Not necessarily in the door, but right across the bumper with that transition into oh, turn number two. Bouquet. Look at that angle for the Ferrari and Bouquet up in the lead position. Binky getting aggressive down to <laughs> three, into the door, pushes in. Bouquet starting to run it out to the wall. He's going to get there and, oh, hits it pretty decently hard, but does not lose too much angle. But goodness me, the Ferrari showing up in troves on that angle. Yeah, I, and I think that the drivers have the chat open or have the stream open. Because <laughs> yeah. every time, I'm like, oh, he's got to clean this up a little bit. Everyone's like, oh, okay, talk no problem, boss. Yeah, look, look at the replay. Binky does exactly what he needs to do and be more present in his chase. Bouquet cleaning up that, that lead and doing something in the power mm -hmm. alley that we really have not seen yet to the other than maybe Nando with his angle. Goodness, Bouquet getting super aggressive. Binky this time in on the door through the final corner as well. Not losing out on proximity and chase. This battle all but even going into the second half. And the only thing that saved Bouquet was that angle. If you watch that run again, when we do have our, um, our final replays, he was so close to that tire drop under the mm -hmm. grass. So I think that angle was not because he was trying to impress, not because he was trying to put down a lead run. I think he was just trying to stay on the track. So here we go then, second half of this battle. Binky getting his second lease at life in the lead. Bouquet and Chase needs to be more aggressive in turn one. Will he do just that? A little closer on proximity this time for that initiation, but not really in on the door. Shells out a little bit to close it back in. Trying his best to close oh, back in. He will do just that in the second half, touching the door and kind of falling out once again for the second half of that run and down through the power alley. Binky throwing Kill. on the Kill angle him. into the final Kill corner. Him. Gets it all the way out to the wall, touching almost bouquet kind of not exactly matching what binky did in a chase for the final corner but all in all i would say this battle trillion times better than the last one and i see the, i can see this going omt again i agree no I, <laughs> I, I, I if there was a point for an omt last time i think there might be another one coming up here and i think this one this battle has <laughs> they're calling it this yep. is it omt2 for this banger of a battle that's got to play into Binky's favor again. Guys, got to keep in mind these cars that they've chosen. Binky is in that Ferrari-powered R32, but he is on the lighter car with the, uh, the narrower tire, so he's going to be chewing through those tires a whole lot slower. Uh, the longer this goes, the worse it gets for Bouquet. Big car, big tire, those tires are going to fry. Now, hopefully we're not going to be seeing a Nirvana situation. We'll see what's going on. 31% we're seeing on screen for that R32. Got to imagine the rear Zambu K might be a little worse for wear. Have to pull that up and, and, and take a quick little look at some point here. But regardless, they're lining up once again. Here's all those OMTs you were calling for earlier, Pike. It is time. We are here. Inject this content into my veins. <laughs> all right, both drivers then back Ooh. on the line. Okay. Actually, Ian, I just checked telemetry. Binky has the worst tires out of all of them. Really? Yeah, I did not expect that. Wow, well, here we go then. Still on the earlier parts of that percentage, so it shouldn't really weigh a factor now. But Bouquet going to initiate for the third time in this battle. Really gets aggressive in Chase once again is Binky. Lots of angle in the lead, losing out of proximity. Chase now is Binky through the power alley section. Really not matching at all through that section. And maybe oh, no. angles into the final corner. Runs it wide, losing out of proximity big time. That could be a giant mistake for Binky. Oh, the ball is now in the court for Bouquet. Oh, what a shame. That is not a way you want to go out. But just Unfortun <laughs> Unfortunately, the issue, Ian, for Binky. Binky did have his mistake. Bouquet, that was the best lead from Bouquet we've seen all day. Mm -hmm. Kept all four on the track. I think the only time we saw him get some rumble, which is okay, by the way. Um, but the only time we got, saw him got to get up on that rumble strip was that last corner. Only briefly. So for all the runs for Binky to make a mistake, that was not the one yeah it's, it's a shame too because he was really on catch-up mode all the way through the power alley and just it just that that alone caused him to carry way more speed into the final corner than he was ready for and that car just just couldn't handle it couldn't keep up with the ferrari down into that section of the corner running in a lot faster as well than the ferrari was in the lead pushing out wide as a result what a shame but it's not over yet all right switching positions is bucket gonna play it safe in or is he gonna go on full kill mode uh, I, I sure think he's going to go on full camo. This is the final, my guy. 
They're heading into turn one here. Big angle from Binky, but he is up on that rumble ship. That is going to slow him down. Door open for Bouquet. Bouquet not really diving in like we expect. He's got the proximity, but again, that Ferrari not matching the angle. That R32. Binky oh. doing everything he can in the lead position to keep his hopes alive. What oh. enough he did, he did he save himself? It, it, it seemed like the speed was a little down. The tires maybe starting to play a factor in this battle. Binky not really as aggressive on throttle this time, and as a result, losing out on speed, but definitely there in the style department with all of that angle. But that is going to be a quick decision. XE Bouquet is the winner of this battle. He shall be advancing to face TSC Preston. Not TSC Preston, JSI Preston in the final four. I, I mean... Out of all the for all the final fours to have, this is gonna be a brawl. I mean, Bouquet, Bouquet, we saw him slowly improve and get better and better and better as those battles went on. Uh, and like I said, I think that lead run was the best one out of all of them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for Binky, his title hopes are dashed. But with the season that he's had, and I don't think has anything to feel bad about. Yeah, well, Smarmy, as we mentioned before, rookie of the season, doing everything he needs to do this year to put his staple on 2019. You got to believe 2020, he's got something special in the tank for us, should he decide to return. That is going to be it for lobby number one, guys. When we come back, lobby number two of the championship final, JSI Mystified, I Tandem Crypto, to crypto Vicari, JSI Oeno, TSC Nirvana, Wanted, and I Tandem Profit are going to be here for oh hold on one second actually are you sure it's i tandem profit and not outlaw profit it could be outlaw profit i could be wrong I, I, i've been told a couple of different things but I, i'm seeing a couple of drivers working the way back now actually it looks like our gate car is working to the top of the hill we may have been misinformed we might actually be doing the final four battle here but if that's the case i don't know because bouquet appears to have disconnected he might have been listening to me so i i, I might have just goofed well i mean he went to the top of the hill saw there was no gate car and what right to assume and maybe, maybe our gate car was just grabbing tires. I don't know what the deal may be, but uh, yeah, it looks like Bouquet is not here anymore. Die and Preston are. So just going to wait on a, a staff decision, but it, it looks like Bouquet's not here, so I don't think this battle can go on in this lobby. So if that's the case, then we're going to go ahead and step aside real quick for a couple of minutes. When we come back, more drift action here for the championship final in ESCA. Don't you go anywhere.
All righty. Welcome back to coverage of the Esports Strict Association here on the Buddy Esports Network. And I guess it's time to go pull our favorite feathered friend out of the madness he's found it, it, it very very conveniently happens that uh, there's a very nice lake not terribly far away from Mujo, the lago de bilincino which uh, our friend's been hanging around in all day but we have to drag him out to do his business so kate Kusin, if you would please do us the honors <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> As we bring you That's today's Coding Beach Sports Trivia question. Yeah, it is painful a little bit, right? And as always, the rules before we participate without it. It's ESDA or the iRacing Clowns Podcast Oval Series or the Stock Car Challenge Series powered by iRacing iFlag. It's all the same rules here at Podium Beach Sports and the Esports Trip Association. And your rules for chat answers for trivia are these. First, that employees and contractions from Podium Beach Sports LLC are eligible to participate. Second, and the more important one, only the first response you put in chat will be counted. You get one response per person per broadcast, and any responses after your first will be deleted from chat. So think before you speak. Simple question that we want to know today. We want to know the holder of the unofficial track record for the fastest lap at Mugella. Emphasis on the unofficial part of that. So... You get that right, punch that answer in chat, and you will come away with Chuck's undying love and affection for the day. And I don't know, maybe he'll take you shopping at the Tommy Hilfiger store that's like 15 minutes away from the lake, too. I know he likes to hang on that side of the sort of outskirts of Florence that we're in anyway. So, and, and, and to be fair, Chuck's got style. Chuck's got threads on threads. So, <laughs> And the sooner you give us the correct answer, we can throw him back in the lake, too, which I'm sure he will be very happy with as well. <laughs> So right now we got JSI Mystified out there being your first run of this lobby. He's actually going to be a buy run in that new paint, I believe, Keenan, unless I missed it at Suzuka. Bulky. Really good paint on that car, very much in the, the October feel going on right now. Bulky. And there we go. We have an answer. Ladies and gentlemen, Scorp, you are correct. Roman Grosjean is the fastest person to ever run a lap around Mugello. Unofficially, mind you, it never happened in a race. So congratulations. You are the winner, and you get our undying love and a virtual cookie. I'm not sending you oatmeal raisins. You're getting chocolate chip. Don't listen to Keenan. Don't let him bully you. have a slice of my birthday cake. <laughs> there you go. By the way, happy belated birthday to Keenan Kusin. I'm one year older and one year closer to death. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so that is going to be Mystified's buy run. He will work his way around to the line. And I believe... We are going to have our first battle coming up, but unfortunately, uh, so we have another person who has dropped out, so we may be getting another buy run. Outlaw Profit, not here, unfortunately, but uh, they're going to go ahead and get to that when it is time. We're going to get to our first battle, then, of this lobby. It is Crypto versus Vakari. Yeah, on, uh, honestly, Ian, I think this is anyone's ball game. <clears throat> Vakari, if he decides to drive well today, um, Vakari, one of those guys that the, he's hot or cold, he's either at a 10 or a 0. Um, Crypto definitely, I think, is a more consistent driver out of the two of these, but if Vakari's on it, this is his to lose. All right, who is going to be winning this first battle on the left side of the bracket? Initiation for Crypto, pushing it a little bit wide. Vakari is absolutely going to take advantage of that. Gets it on the door, across the bumper on the transition as well. Not quite there for turn three, but really matching the tire tracks very well through the power alley. Look at all of that angle for Crypto in the lead position into the final corner as well. Here comes Vakari with the charge, laid right into the wheel well of that lead driver. In and out. Throughout the entirety of that battle, it was kind of like a rubber band in chase. Vakari there, then he pulls back, and then he's there, and then he pulls back. But all in all, doing his job as the chase driver and really matching those tire tracks throughout the entirety of that run, Kian. Yeah, Ian, that run was a little bit hard to chase on Vakari's side because of uh, Crypto's adjustments in line. Not a bad run from Crypto, but again, you cannot make mistakes today. Um, the only time I really saw Crypto on it was during that power alley. Then he a little bit wide in turn one, and then going a little bit wide early. Uh, in turn three, but ended up grabbing that, getting to that wall. And only he was going wide, and then looked like he tried to bring it back in, then went back wide again. Um, Vicari did his job as a chase driver, though, was right there with him throughout the entire run, um, matched the angle, matched the proximity. Uh, Vicari did everything he needed to do in the chase. Now we're going to see what he can do, everything he needs to do in the lead. 
And Vakari, as we have mentioned time and time again, he is like Chelsea Denofa in the way he just throws on the style. Is Crypto ready for this Vakari? He could play it safe this time around, but I know Vakari, he is absolutely not going to be playing it safe. He can. In that RTR Mustang. He could, but is he going to? Probably not, Keith. No, he, Ian, he has to bring everything he has. Vakari, again, he can only drive one way, all or nothing. Big flick entry, big angle. Crypto not that phased. Right in behind him, still big angle from that Mustang. Crypto's going to have to match that oh. angle just a little bit more, and he's right there with him. Another big A flick from the car. Oh, Crypto right there with him in the proximity, God. though. Going to lose out a little bit of time, though. Getting to the wall. Is he going to get there? He is. Vicari showed up yeah. today. He brought his driving shoes. There was only one mistake for Vicari's lead, and that was the center of the final corner. You're going to see that car shallow out on the replay. And it has to, to make that correction, but he does come back to angle nicely and does not hit the wall. That is usually a mistake most drivers will make in the center of the corner to gain too much speed and absolutely plow into that wall. What a run for Kari in his lead. What a good run for Crypto as well in his lead. This is actually a lot closer of a battle now, looking back on these replays, than what first meets the eye. The only really big issue I saw from Crypto, Ian, was he looked like he got a little bit excited in that turn three, dove in a little bit too early. You never want to see, as a chase car, you never really want to pass, um, in terms of uh, geometry, you never want to pass the front end of that Mustang, and he went way past the front end of that car, that Mustang. I don't know if that was a result of Rikari shining in late, or a result of Crypto getting a little bit excited, um, but definitely a, I think that will be a point of contention when it comes into judging. Yep, and that is going to be the causation of an OMT to be called. Mm. Oh, baby, I, I, I like it. That's the kind of battle where we talk about it before. You know, these are the things that drivers can adjust on, can, can do better for or do worse for in the second half, but usually do better because they can now adapt to what they do. Crypto now knows Vicari is going to put on the sauce. Uh, Vicari, he knows what Crypto does in his lead now, and I'm sure Crypto is probably going to have to throw a little bit more at it for his lead as well if he wants to, to really staple himself in for the second half with this OMT. Yeah, Ian, I think though, I think that, that that will be Crypto's downfall. I think Crypto just has to stay within his comfort zone, to just clean up a little bit what he already did, and just stay comfortable. Because we can see Vicari try to do these big saucy things, and it gets him into trouble. Well, we're going to see it now, right there Whoa. with the proximity matching the angle. Crypto looking like he lost a little bit of speed, but the Vicari really adjusted there well, right there on the proximity. Oh, but losing out. Why there is going to be a bit of a gap opened here. Now BMW got a little bit, couple of car lengths on them, but Vicari's going to cut his line a little bit, be able to gain that proximity right back up and across the line. Good recovery from Vicari, but we don't want to see a gap like that open. Yet. Yeah, that, that was just too much of a gap. Losing out on throttle going into the power alley. We've seen it time and time again. If you don't set yourself up and turn too properly and get the speed through that corner, you are absolutely going to lose out down that hill section. Crypto initiating a little farther to the left than we've seen most drivers doing today, but still gets to the line okay, albeit he was definitely on that rumble strip. Looks like Vakari cutting into turn two a little bit to close back in on the proximity. Charges in a really weird location. Doesn't really get into the door until the exit of turn two. And that's really going to be the cause of Crypto being able to check out because, you know, you're trying to, to close it in. You just check up a little bit getting into the door and, and Crypto is already kind of accelerating off the corner. And that's where you're going to see that gap being shown. So maybe a slight advantage this time around for Crypto. See what he's got in the chase this time. That's what I'm saying. And that's why you kept saying, oh, he's got to throw on the sauce, got to throw on the sauce. But I think that if you try to, to, to go out of your comfort zone, that's where these <clears throat> big mistakes are going to come from. But they have right. switching positions. Vicari in the lead now. This is where we should see something exciting. Yeah, so Vicari going to get his chance at another run up in the lead. Okay. Runs it in backwards into turn That's one. So and Crypto not there in the picture. Closes in nicely for the second quarter. Trying to match that angle for Vicari. He's going to actually do just that. Down the power alley and into the final corner. Getting aggressive in on the door. Vicari really pushing in all the way into the numbers on the side of that door. But kind of losing out on the exit of the corner. What a run for both these drivers. Crypto, other than losing out proximity in the start, was able to match Vicari in the bottom half of the course. That was a solid chase. Um, we're going to talk about the chase. We're going to talk about the runs as a whole, obviously. Um, you know, apparently there was a bit of a tire drop from Vicari in his chase that I missed. Chat caught it. I didn't. Um, I think that was as close to as a 100-point run on a lead as I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> so Vicari does have those deficits, does have those issues with his chase. He just made them all back up with his lead. But Crypto didn't really do anything wrong in no. his lead. It wasn't 
super exciting. Obviously, he wasn't matching the angle. He wasn't matching. Um, he wasn't really there until the second half of the run. But it's not like he made mistakes. He just could have done a little bit better. Um, so how the judge is going to view, like, maybe not doing as good as you could have versus mistakes, a little bit of mistakes, and a really, really good run. Are they going to view that consistency, or are they going to give it all on the tee for that? And they are going to award that consistency. I, Tandem Crypto, will be advancing mm. to the great eight. He will be facing JSI Mystified. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to probably be upset with that call because, again, we did see Ricari put down the lead run of the round so far. But it's uh, this is why they, we switch them up. This is why we have leads and follows, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yep. Ricari just didn't have it clean enough on his follow. We did see him a little bit of wavering. We did see him drop a front tire into that green patch on that first turn. Again, thank you, chat, because I, I apparently had too many beers last night. Um, <laughs> But, you know, that, that that excellent lead run, unfortunately, just was not enough uh, to fight the consistency from Crypto. And Crypto will be moving on. Really, really good run from Crypto. Uh, and this he, this momentum is going to have to help him in this battle against Mystified, I would imagine. Oh, absolutely. So this is then going to be JSI Ueno versus TSC Nirvana. Uh, Nirvana new to TSC as of the Suzuka round, leaving TUS. And doing some pretty good things on TSC as well with a pretty solid showing last time out. As well as in practice runs I've seen from this man. He is definitely looking pretty solid. It's going to be something special to take down Ueno. Ueno has been on fire the second half of the season, Keenan. Yeah, Ian Ueno has been on fire. What are we going to see from him today? What are we going to see from uh, Nirvana? Nirvana cannot be counted out, cannot be understated. A little bit of a lack of proximity there. This is where Ueno is going to take off. A little bit of a wavering from Angle Woo! from Nirvana. Not the Nirvana we expect to see, but Ueno is locked in in that lead position right now. That Italian car, that Italian engine, if you at home here, Magello Circuit. Man, Ueno really getting on it. A couple of, of touch and go moments at the start of the run. Maybe not necessarily being consistent with power. But as far as line goes, Ueno. Pretty solid. That was a really good one for a lead to be an, a, a nice, safe, and in-contention, mistake-free lead out of JSI Ueno. Nirvana, maybe not necessarily there aggressively in chase, but he was definitely in the picture, and that's one thing you got to be. All in all, I'd say that's a pretty safe lead, and that was a, a pretty safe chase. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Nirvana's chase, Ian, you know those Soldier Boy memes? Oh, no. They go like, oh, oh. that's kind of what Nirvana's <laughs> chase was. Where I was like, oh, he's going to do the, oh, he went a little bit wide. Oh, he's going to do the, oh, he went a little bit wide early. Um, so we'd, I'd like to see him get a little bit more aggressive, but I mean, at this point, you're just trying to make it, make it rounds. You know, if it was finals, that'd be a different thing. You want to go all out. Um, so this safety strategy again worked out for Nando. So I think some other drivers are taking notice for that and, uh, and applying that to their own driving. All right. Second half of this battle, Ben Nirvana is going to get his chance at the lead. No way, no. Could be getting his chance at the chase. Nirvana. Very consistent driver with his leads throughout the entirety of this year. Ueno going to be pushing in oh, aggressive, no. but Nirvana runs oh, it no. way deep into the corner. He's going to push those fronts all the way onto the grass. That is a big drop in his lead position. Unfortunate for Nirvana, Ueno really probably just needs to keep it in the picture here. He might have himself a pretty solid chance at moving on beyond this round. Keeps it in the tire track, not necessarily in the proximity, but a big mistake for Nirvana. Unfortunately, just not wide enough in turn one. Pushes the front tires into the green. Two tire drops for that lead. I mean, Nirvana seeing that there was a little bit of lag between him and and unfortunately, that's not going to help the case at all. Um, you know, just looked like that car he got on the gas and just didn't expect the car to grip up as much as it did. Um, Ueno kind of got thrown off and was never really there, but at that point, you don't really need to be. So that is going to be that. Then JSI Ueno advances to the next <laughs> round of competition and unfortunately, a late uh, developing <laughs> development. In this tournament, Outlaw Prophet does not appear to be here. So that is going to be giving XC Wanted. Stop it, you. That is going to be giving <laughs> XC Wanted a buy run into the grade eight. Oh, that's going to be a good battle. This will be JSI Ueno versus XE Wanted. Have they battled before? I don't. XL, yeah. Let's go. Let's go, XE Wanted. Let's go. Finally on a team. Oh, well, he's on DMA. That's not. <laughs> uh, but finally have a team that's. That's uh, like a top tier team. DMA have been around for a long time. They're not super. I think Wanda was really the only one um, from the team really going out there and uh, getting tournament results. So uh, I'm glad to see him on a team of guys that are all of similar skill level uh, and going to build themselves up. But all we have to do, guys, again, all we have to see is a scorable run here. No two tire drops, no spins. This has to get through the course. 
But again, uh, I'm really upset now because if he doesn't zero this, my two favorite drivers are going to both be against each other. My old <laughs> teammate and, <laughs> and the meme machine. And ooh, wants to get a good piece of the wall, but he'll still finish it out regardless. That is then going to be actually wanted advancing to grade eight versus J S I O N. Well, now that we got a little bit of a null in the action, um, this is going to set the stage then for the last four drivers of this lobby. Lobby number one coming up here. We got J S I Mystified versus I Tandem Crypto as the other battle of this lobby. Of course, J S I O N O and X E Wanted just about to happen here in the next couple of minutes. These four drivers. Very, very consistent throughout the entirety of the season. Maybe the other than the crypto having some some touch and go performances here out, but he definitely belongs here with this these names here. Wants and maybe the same story. A little touch and go throughout the season. He puts down good results, but he's had a couple of, of odd upsets here and there that, that have really tipped the uh the balance maybe towards the favor of Ueno on this battle. But again, if Wanted shows up, he's on XE for a reason, guys. We we could be in for a banger here. I'm 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 thoroughly looking forward to this. Yeah, Ian, this could be again all the battles I think from top sixteen onward are all going to be very close and very aggressive and um, pressure pressure cookers. We're basically going to see who can cope with the pressure the most out of all of them and um, you know who can move on to the next round. Unfortunately, Crypto <laughs> not getting not a good draw with Mystified. Mystified, our regular season champion. Yep, on the line. Here we go. I-10 Crypto versus JSI Mystified, your first battle of lobby number two's great eight. This is Mystified's first battle of the tournament. Here's that initiation for the S13 into the lead. Getting saucy with the angle. Making a couple of corrections in Chase. Trying to get back into the door. Mystified, he's going to be there in the picture. But Mystified is consistent as all get out in his lead as he has been all season long. That is your regular oh season God. champion for a reason. And this time he even throws on that backwards angle into the final corner as well. Mystified a little bit late to that outside clip in turn number three. But all in all, Mystified. Not here to play. That, that is a man on the hunt. Chat, I don't know if you heard it, Ian. I don't know if you heard it, but what impressed me the most about that run, listen to Mystified's car from the point of, uh, I think, transition from turn one to turn two, and the rest of the run, he was full bore. Full mm -hmm. pin the entire time. That transit, that power alley into transition to three to stay on power, not, not an easy thing to do. Uh, <laughs> um, so Mystified obviously was putting in the work, putting in the practice in the spooky machine. Um, Crypto, again, not putting down necessarily a bad run, but it looks like he just lost some ground coming into that uh, power alley and wasn't able to gain it back up. And, and it's crazy how he's able to so consistently keep the gap going, considering that that car is, compared to most of the drivers out here, lower powered. He's one of the very few drivers who sit there in that six range on the horsepower scale. So, you know, he, he has definitely come to terms with this car. He has made it his own. He knows what to do with that thing. And maybe that lower horsepower allowing him to stay on throttle keep the style going just it's, it's a super fun style to watch he's doing things that most other drivers cannot do here in esga but now what does crypto have in his lead crypto no slouch he has to do something very impressive here in his lead to throw it into one and oh he's gonna do just that with the backwards angle into turn number one mystified is here but losing out a little bit on proximity now through turn two closing back into the power alley crypto trying to put down his mark on this track throws in the angle for the final corner as well he is all but backwards into the final corner and hits the line perfectly mystified pushing it aggressively on the door oh my god run for both of these drivers on the second half of this battle keeman oh, crypto you're not allowed to do that to me <laughs> uh, i thought i saw i saw this man's life flash before my eyes twice uh he went backwards in turn one he went backwards in turn two or turn three so three is not a corner you want to do that i want to carry all the speed that you can uh, but you end up i think it worked out to mystified's favor mystified just um not that consistent super aggressive uh follow on that we expect for him because Crypto was doing some stuff. Um, really, really good angle from that BMW. Really good line from that BMW. And honestly, for what he was doing, carried a decent amount of speed. Was just able to keep all four tires on the track as well. Yep, and that is going to be the run that punches JSI Mystified into the final four. JSI Mystified, the winner of this battle between he and I Tandem Crypto. Yeah, I think just more consistency. More the more I looked at it there, I just we had to come down from the whole, oh my god, Crypto, what are you doing? You madman. Um, just a little bit more consistent um was you know as, as good of a lead as crypto had mystified was kind of in the picture the entire time uh i think crypto losing that ground on his follow position was the nail in the coffin for him unfortunately um unfortunately what we're gonna see is um we're all we're gonna see is um stats 
but crypto went out swinging and if in terms of to lose uh he he went out both with guns blazing speaking of guns blazing jsi ueno xc wants it coming off the line with power both cars throwing it into one look at the angle for that alpha in the lead pushing a little bit wide however wanted trying to get aggressive on the back half is oh, getting a little no. bit of a situation of lag here someone may have dropped out of here the car's going but unfortunately this is most likely going to be a rerun as we just now yeah. are getting a picture back so both drivers uh that's going to be a moot run we to try again because Ueno just did something real cool. <laughs> I saw that. He was all but backwards in the final corner. That is just unfortunate. Yeah, welcome to Forza Motorsport 7, where dreams are driven. Uh, just one of the side effects of this game, unfortunately, when uh, someone lags out or someone loses or uh, is backs out in the middle of a run, uh, which is happening again here, uh, in spectator mode, it just gives you like a loading, please wait. Um, um, I'm a, you know, a lot of times we point a finger, um, but sometimes people just end up lagging out, and it's unfortunate. But uh, I would assume that these guys know a little bit better at this point, especially being having competing hmm. all year. So let's hope it's not something like that. <clears throat> um, but this, I'm almost sure, and this will be a rerun because we didn't see half of that. Yeah, I know. It's already, it's already been called. Die is saying rerun, so they're going to go ahead and line it up real quick. We're going to try this once again. This is a Wayno versus Wanted for not an OMT, but a, a straight up rerun now, as now mm -hmm. both drivers are hopefully going to be seeing. Hey. We haven't seen one in a while, so we'll take I'll take it. <laughs> so JSI Ueno can be given lead this time. Wants it in chase of the initiation for this great eight battle. A little bit wide this time for oh, Ueno, no. unfortunately. Cut him, cut him, yeah. Not going to be able He's going to bring it down back nicely to back to the left-hand side of the course. Transition for turn three. A little bit deep into those rumbles, however. Wants it in the picture. Lots of angle for that alpha up in the lead position through the final corner. Wants it here in the picture for the final sector of the course as well. But what a shame for Ueno because that was definitely a lot wider through turn one that we saw in the uh, the rerun run. That is just one of those unfortunate situations. Oh boys, this conversation is turning into a confrontation. <laughs> oh dear. Um, you know, uh, Juan and Ueno going a little bit wide, like we said, a little bit of issues on his line, unfortunately. Uh, nice and smooth at angle, good speed in that, in that alpha, but Wanted is, you know, comes in terms of speed, Ian, uh, these might be two of the fastest cars in the field today, especially for the season. Uh, being having been someone who's gone up against Wanted, uh, that thing is is quick. So Ueno did not have that ace in his pocket um, when it came to being able just to put the power down and take off. Uh, Wanted, I want to point out, really really good adjustments in that chase position. Really good job in terms of um, you know seeing Ueno was going a little bit wide and adjusting that and keeping his line correct. Yeah, definitely a very clean chase this time. Wants getting his chance at the lead. Ueno in chase. What does he have on the second half of this battle? Look at that angle into one for Wants. Oh, pushes wide again. Slight break correction to not go completely wide, but still holds the angle okay. Oh, really aggressive in on chase. Pushing into the corner, and that's going to cause a massive loss in proximity down the power alley. Ueno feeling the pressure, trying to get back aggressive on the final corner, but that was a massive slip up as Wants it getting saucy on the angle through the final sector of the course. Wanted. Throwing down some dirty, dirty things that lead position, but unfortunately, I don't think Ueno is ready for it. And Chase, really not there in the picture. Maybe he's saying a couple of things here. Maybe we missed something on his end, but I don't, I don't know what the heck happened in that first corner. It almost looked like lag because Wanted just dropped, like looked like five miles an hour out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, and I, I don't like when it comes down to this, but I think that's going to be. I don't know if they're going to rerun it. I don't know if that's going to be the decider, but that that is going to be a talking point for sure. Uh, yeah. and like Ueno lost the ground and was like, oh no, what the hell? And then tried to make it up again. And then that's where that contact with turn two came from. There is going to be, even if there was not lag, there is a contentious point there in Wanted's lead for one as well. That loss of proximity to the center of the corner. You can see Wanted on the brakes in the center of the corner. And I do not believe that is a slow down zone. So if they deem that it was his fault, there could be a uh, loss of proximity for Ueno being tipped into Wanted's favor as that being his fault, rather. But it's, it's just really hard to say. It could be lag. It could be a late break application. There's, it's hard to say. It's a very difficult situation here, Keenan. Yeah. It's more so did the cause, uh, the contact on one cause turn two um contact the turn two contact for me right now is the is the big what if because we need to put fault to that did mm -hmm. want to go a little bit slow did ueno try to gain the ground back up and was over aggressive was it their line the difference in lines is that what that caused that i think turn two is a lot more uh, important right now than turn one because if wanted is at fault for two contacts 
obviously he's in some trouble. But if he's only at fault for one and Oena's at fault for one, uh, we could be seeing this battle go either way. We could be seeing it go one more time. Um, so I think that right now, those two points of contact are the important parts in this battle. Again, we're going to get our, um, our little ticker for you fixed up here in a second, guys. I know it hasn't been moving. Uh, the text has kind of just been sitting there. So we'll just get that fixed up. Make sure that fixed up for you. So it looks like there may be a decision coming here in a couple of seconds. Die getting ready to potentially drop that decision. Yeah, we're not and, even judging it. I'm stressed out. Yep, that is going to be XE Wanted advancing to the final four. He will be facing JSI Mystified. Yeah, I think, man. Um, I said, I think that uh, that a contact in the second corner is what did it. Oh, I went home. Um, first corner, I, I really don't know what happened there. Uh, again, it didn't look like a natural loss of speed, um, but he was on the brakes. But that second corner, if Ueno would not have made contact, if he, it's it's hard it's hard to make this kind of kind of comment from where we are and not on the track. But uh, and I'm saying he should have grabbed his composure within <laughs> you know half a second, if that. <laughs> um, but if if he kind of just gathered himself a little bit uh, and. Uh, came in uh, to him normally on that turn two. I think that was Ueno all day, every day. But um, they're, I think they say that he went a little bit wide, which you could see on the camera. Uh, and unfortunately, there was contact again, and then they're going to put that on Ueno, and that is going to be wanted moving on. All right, I believe right now we have Dai driving around to grab the replay. So we may be getting a new lobby here, waiting for confirmation from Dai. And uh, since we have that decision, we will let you know. It looks like we are going to then go ahead and grab a new lobby. This is it. This is your final four. It all comes down to this. It is all on the line. Who has what it takes to win 2019 ESDA's championship? Is it going to be JSI Preston? Is it XE Bouquet? Is it JSI Mystified? Or is it XE Wanted? We are going to find out in just a couple of short minutes. Don't you go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Cue the silver scrape. It is time for your championship final in just a couple of short moments. Why is it when I get an invite?
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to your final lobby of 2019 Esports Drift Association. This is where it all comes down to the thickness of it, ladies and gentlemen. Four drivers remain in this championship hunt. Only one of them are going to get the chance to walk away from this very lobby as your 2019 Esports Drift Association and cement themselves as the best of the best for Forza Drift in 2019. Introducing those four drivers. Ladies and gentlemen, he has been on a tear all season long. He's one of two JSI representations in your final four. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for JSI Mystified and his competition in the bottom left of the bracket. New to XE, but not new to Forza Drift whatsoever. He is not a stranger to throwing it down big, throwing it down hard, and doing so in ways that most cannot even comprehend. It's XE Wanted. And on the right half of the bracket, Mystified's closest competition all season long and also teammates of him in 2019, late in the season. The only driver in ESDA to pick up two wins in the season is JSI Preston. And his competition in the bottom right of the bracket. Last but certainly not least, Bouquet has been right on the precipice of excellence all season long. And if he's going to do it, now is the time to shine. Ladies and gentlemen, it's X-E Bouquet. I don't know how you said the word Bouquet with gusto, but I respect <laughs> it's hard. you for it. It's, it's hard. So it's <laughs> e Bouquet. Bouquet. <laughs> Bouquet. <laughs> so this is your first battle of the final four. Which one of these two will be advancing to your final? And who is going to be left fighting for scraps? It's JSI Mystified in the lead versus XE Wanted in Chase. All right, we got the spooky man himself. Is that livery change going to help or hinder? That's the only thing. I think that's the most he's changed in that car in all year. I think so. He, yeah, he, no, he made a couple of horsepower deviations here and there, but all in all, the car has stayed mostly the same. Not even the I've, chassis has changed. I heard he only made gearing changes all year. Wow. That's what I've heard, but he'll have to correct me. All right, both drivers going to hit the reverse. They're going to keep those tires warm. They're going to make sure that every single variation is in their hands. Can't have a cold tire being the reason why your season gets thrown away. Both these drivers are veterans of the Forza Drift scene. This is going to be fun. The motor is revving on that gate car. This is your first Final Four battle of the 2019 championship. JSI mystified in the lead. Axie wanted in chase. Nissan S13 versus Mustang battle. Initiation for mystified. Throwing on the angle and doing it so disgustingly wanted. Not ready whatsoever and is absolutely losing out of proximity through turn one. Trying to close it back into turn two, but mystified is consistent. Gets aggressive. Almost hooks the bumper through the power alley. Closing it back in. Wanted just not in the picture mystified looking like that car is on a rail how is he doing that with that s13 what a run for the lead in mystified wanted just not in the picture keenan no and ian i remember what i said uh with vicari saying oh he had the lead run of the day he uh -huh. has the second best lead run of the day <laughs> um you know i don't think that s13 can do the things like i don't think it physically can do the things that vicari's car can so knowing that and taking that into account um, that run from Mystified was stupid. Big flick entry to the... It's not easy to do in this game, the little, um, the little, the little flick entry. Um, it just doesn't have the response speed in, in the wheel to do it. But uh, Mystified just using the power of the car, flicking that car in, and it looked like Wanted was never comfortable, unfortunately. No. Right from the get-go, you can see that he had so much ground to make up there. And he was doing his best to do just that. Get super, super aggressive through the power as well. Almost completely hooking Mystified off into the dirt when he finally closed it back in. Wanted. Needs to find something special here in this lead. This is going to be probably the run of his life here. He needs to do some stuff that he has never done with his Mustang to overcome this deficit. He can, Ian. It's, it's definitely possible. Wanted definitely one of those drivers that can pull this out. But Mystified's been on a tear all year. And is it going to continue? Ooh. Oh. Curb mystified giving him the room to make the mistake. Bought a big transition to turn two. Door wide open for that S13 now. Moving into the last half of the course. Big angle from that Mustang. Oh. <laughs> big angle from that Mustang. Mystified there, but not quite there on proximity. He's going to get to that wall before Wanda does. 
A little bit all over the place for Wanda again. Um, mystified. I want to say he wasn't there, Ian, but I think he wasn't there just because he was trying to give that lead car room to do what he needed to do. Yeah, at this point, if, if Wanta did something Mystify wasn't ready for and he caused a shutdown, then, you know, that's just an unnecessary risk considering the advantages that he probably had going into the second half of his battle. Such a quick decision being made. JSI Mystified is your first finalist of the championship playoff here at Mugello. JSI Mystified, given the win, he will be going on to face whoever is the winner of this next battle in just JSI Preston or XE Bouquet. So far in this XE versus JSI battle, JSI getting the most of it. Let's see if Bouquet can even the score. Yeah, Bouquet again not out of this yet. Or no, I'm wanted not out of this yet. Going to be seeing him again in your third place battle. But is he going against his teammate? Or is he going to have to take down another JSI member? We're going to be, have to wait and find out. So just waiting on the drivers to warm them on up. Die is calling for the battle. Now, 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 real quick, we got a little bit of a, a downtime. Let's talk about something here. Mm. JSI Preston, as I mentioned before, is your only two-time winner. Yes. He has everything in the toolkit that Mystify does as far as like the resources now with JSI and the, the, the consistent and quality practice, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this battle ain't over yet here, all right? Bouquet is no slouch. Preston, absolutely no slouch. He's shown his results time and time again. Do, do you think, let's say, in, in a world where Mystified advances, or not Mystified, Preston advances from this battle, that he might actually have something for Mystified there? Because Mystified, once again, I don't... That, that, that's that stuff we don't see from anybody else here out here today. That's so damn good, watching what he does with that car up in the lead position. Preston, he's been good, but the inconsistencies here and there, do you think JSI could potentially push him over here if we're first getting around Bouquet to start? But, you know, yeah. does he have what it don't takes? Don't count Bouquet out. Do not count Bouquet out at all. Not even in the slightest. But, Ian, in, interesting thing that I was told, but I'm a lot of alcohol and a lot of brain cells have died in the past 24 hours. Uh, I don't know what kind of accident it was, but um, Mystified was in a pretty significant accident. I believe he oh, just I heard about his that. leg and his ankle. Um, I want to say that if, if, if Preston has a hope, uh, it's going to be that that somehow affects Mystified. But again, we're not done here, ladies and gentlemen. Second half of our final four, Preston versus Bouquet. Another uh, JSI for SE battle. Bouquet oh. right there on the door of Preston, maybe for slipping out a little bit uh, wide there. Preston right on the ideal line. He's going to open up a little bit of gap in that GTR. Can that Ferrari gain the position, gain the ground back on him? He sure does. Doesn't quite have the angle, but he's sacrificing a little bit for proximity, and he gets there wow. right on the line. Well, geez, if Bouquet changes the Ferrari for the, the speed gains that this car has versus his Mustang, Mm -hmm. uh, that, that that GTR just completely shut down any argument to change cars here. Because goodness me, that thing is fast. In the Either league. I'm really dumb, which is possible, or Preston is doing that things in that car speed wise that not really anybody else is doing. No, um, that the GTR has been typically more of a style car. That thing was absolutely taking off this battle. Yeah, I mean, like it has decent to good amounts of speed in the chassis but it's not like this is one of the fastest cars at least from my experience i know there's probably three people in chat but oh, actually uh <laughs> um but just from what i've seen and from what i've seen from other drivers it seems like it's a good car for speed it's a good choice but it's like if you're focusing on your speed something like that ferrari um would be way more ideal but uh and i didn't think it came down to Outright speed, I think Preston just had the better line. Oh, this is going to be the second half of the battle. Bouquet, what do you have in your lead to match? What just happened with Preston's lead? Only one way to find out. A small little boop on initiation. Is <laughs> here we go with the aggressive flick going in the proximity and chase with that GTR is there in turn. Needless to say, across the front the transition. Bouquet with the big oh, flick in the corner. Again. Some bobbles here and there. Losing on oh proximity now in chase in the GTR. Giant flick again in the final corner. Bouquet getting down onto the rumble strip, getting super aggressive with the angle. Maybe pushing out wide, but it gets to the wall nicely. Never mind. GTR in the picture this time, but a solid run for Bouquet in his lead as well this time. Ian, I think Bouquet got hung up on that rumble strip in turn three a little bit. That's why we saw the little bit of contact from Preston. You want to start seeing those cars push out wide, get to that outer zone, but we didn't we it, the car, like the Ferrari didn't really look like it was backing off naturally like it should have. Um gonna have to keep an eye on those front tires as well. Very aggressive on the curbs was Bouquet trying to use the line of the racetrack, trying to get away from that GTR. Uh, worked out for him right till the end. You see, like, again, you grab a little bit of curb. It looks like he shallows out a little bit. Then gets a little, a nice little, another little piece from that GTR. Um, so, I mean, I, I want to say Bouquet did about everything that he could do um, mm -hmm. to get some gap. But, you know, did, do, are we going to see 
maybe he should like are we going to say maybe he should have stuck to the mustang was because this ferrari choice going to pay off for him again he has not no competition experience in that car in esda this year this was a last round change and guys if, if you are unfamiliar with our rule set here you're allowed to change cars one time throughout the year uh i would think that you would stay in the car that got you here um but switching to that ferrari um may or may not have paid off for bouquet but we're gonna have to find out from the judges calls here it doesn't look like he dropped on tire or turn one but i think turn three is that going to be that big uh point of contention yeah, really looking at that transition as well from turn two to the power alley. Car, similar to what happened versus Bink, you're seeing Bouquet's car kind of shimmying left and right a little bit. I know it's a spectator side thing, but the last time the He's car did that. hearing as well, I do believe. Yeah, well, well, remember the last time that we saw his car doing that, the driver in chase was reporting some lag. And Preston this time saying that uh, he was dropping everywhere. I don't know exactly what that means, but there, there could be another potential uh, bit of lag for what happened with Bouquet in the lead. So, really depends. I mean, Bouquet on... is from a good eye, so like, it's <laughs> not impossible. I think the rest of our drivers are from North America, I believe. Wanted's from the states. Preston's from the states. Yeah, yeah. So he's the only. He's our last hope. If if you're not American, he's our last hope in terms of nationality. Yeah, it was a very, very aggressive chase for Preston, getting in on Bouquet. Bouquet doing everything he needed to do to, to put down a good run there. But yeah, maybe running it a little bit too shallow into turn one, rather. Getting a, a small piece of that inside bit of the rumble and doesn't quite push out. And I don't know if it was a point of lag contention here or if Preston just wasn't really able to match no. because of the line he took. But it was, it was something, look, something look, happened there. Look at the behavior from the Ferrari in turn three. He, he gets hooked up on the rumble, and he you want to see that car has consistent and smooth angle throughout the whole corner. The front end kind of washes out very sh very slightly, uh, and that's when the contact made. Not before, but after. It's almost like the rear end of the car ah, yeah, yeah, swings yeah, into the front end of that GD. You saw it that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Well, here we go. This is going to be an interesting one here. OMT has been called. Good. They're getting another chance, and I think that is the correct call. There, there, there was definitely a, a decision to go either way. There were talking points, but smart decision to call an OMT here. Both drivers going to get another chance at this. Yeah, they're going to be turning them back around. Ian, warming those tires back up. Bouquet, uh, the king of the OMTs today, I think. <laughs> yeah. Has had the most out of anybody. Uh, been had the most seat time on this track. Um, in terms of competition today, is that going to help him or is that going to hinder him? We're going to find out, ladies and gentlemen. Forget what you know. OMT number one, Preston the lead representing Team Just Slide It. Xenon's bouquet giving chase. Big angle from Preston in the lead. A little bit of a drop in speed, but Bouquet adjusted. Is that right there with him? Not a angle there from the go. Ferraris we see from that GTR. Are we going to see the GTR take off from that Ferrari? And no, not like we did before. <laughs> here now bouquet right on the quarter fender of that gtr is that gtr gonna be a little bit off the wall oh no right wow. over, right over the wall great one from both these guys and finally finally i think mm -hmm. an excellent chase run from bouquet he's had some strong ones today but nothing in that top upper echelon i think he's finally broken that barrier did bouquet just wake up keenan look at on that replay with the, the the proximity the matching was there this time bouquet getting in aggressive in places where he has not been all day long keeping the smoothest in chase as well and keeping up with that mighty quick gtr up in the lead position but goodness me look at the way he aggressed through the power alley as well to keep himself in the picture all the way through turn three that is the kind of chase we are expecting out of an axi driver bouquet is here yeah, only two issues he and I saw was Preston, maybe a little bit of a weird, <laughs> a little bit of a weird drop in speed um, from that GTR in that first corner. Bouquet unfortunately adjusted, and then Bouquet going a little bit wide in turn three. All right, second half of this battle, Bouquet getting his shot at the lead here in this OMT, your first of the final four. GTR gets a little aggressive and saucy on the throw, bumps into the back, but no harm, no foul. Here's the aggressive initiation for Bouquet and the Ferrari in the lead. Really solid angle all the way through turn one, flicks it nicely for two as well. Preston in the picture, in chase, trying his best to match that Ferrari to the power wheel. A gap being shown, angles it up, trying to slow it on down to get back into the door of Bouquet, but Bouquet is painting that whoa, line whoa, whoa, perfect, whoa, 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 boy. all the way into the wall, making wow, some contact whoa, that was whoa. almost rough. I agree. Bouquet, I thought that might have been the contact that could end him there, but the wall did not bite this time. No, unfortunately, I think Andy, if he, Ian, if he would have hit that wall any harder, we would have been seeing some issues. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't really, like, Preston got gapped, not a lot, but, like, just a little bit. Yeah. 
Um, I, again, I think Bouquet, we were looking at that car, it doesn't look like he sacrificed too much angle, just using the curbs to his advantage, um, making sure he's on power and using that um, the strengths of that car, which is its speed. Um, we did see Preston catch him near the end, though, um, but that wall is getting the crap beaten out of it today. <laughs> I really feel for the people who, uh, well, actually, you know, to be fair, it looks like they haven't even painted that section of the concrete at this point because they know it's just going to get abused over and over again. What's the point, right? Drivers they got, they got all of our clipping points there. They Absolutely. painted all orange. We don't have clips on it anymore. There you go. <clears throat> Man. Well, back on this battle then. There were points where drivers were, were, were better and opposite points of this run. If there was an OMT decision to be made last time, what do you think about this one, Keenan? Oh, man, I don't really want to say anything. Oh, I don't really oh no, you, you don't need to. You don't need to. OMT has been called. OMT2, yeah. the Ian, king of OMT strikes again. Ian, that wall hit is what killed Bouquet. Because mm -hmm. I think, because oh, I was about to say, you know what? If I had to pick somebody right now, I think I would pick Bouquet. If you're going to go off of what the judges have been doing all day, they've been rewarding consistency. They've been rewarding, um, you know, we know you can do cool stuff. But can you be consistent throughout your entire run? And Preston, again, this is so nitpicky tit for tat. And it's like the people winning battles. It's like if you were doing a uh, D1 style, um, 5.1 to 4.9, like very, very close. Um, but I think that wall hit was a bit too hard for the judges and they're sending them again. But I think Aussie man has woken. Uh, so keep an eye on that Ferrari. Preston, again, not to take anything away from Preston. Preston's been on one all day, but Bouquet has not looked comfortable in this car up until right here, right now. OMT number two, ladies and gentlemen, forget what you know once again. GTR on the lead, Ferrari giving taste. He's got a little bit of a lead, but is he going to push out a little bit wide? No, that's oh. unfortunately going to carry a little bit of a gap for Bouquet that he is going to have to make up. Looking like he's inching, 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 inching. Oh, a little bit of a lack of angle there for Preston as they transition. Going to create a bit of a gap. Is going to have Bouquet going to have to close the gap. Big drop there, I think, for Preston. We're going to have to see that again. And then Bouquet hitting that outer zone where he's supposed to be. Preston hitting that wall, but it looked like a little bit late. Ian, you're supposed to get better. You're supposed to get better yeah. as a result in tease. Yeah, this is probably the sloppiest battle they've seen so far in this, uh, this bout here. Armor. Yeah, no, that was that was really rough to see. It looks like Bouquet um, kind of loses out in turn one, tries to close it back in aggressively, maybe pushing a little bit wide, allowing the, the, the pull away there. But something weird happened with Preston through the power alley. Like, I don't know if he was a, a late transition or maybe Bouquet aggressed a little too hard in chase, causing another loss of proximity. But, you know, that was, that was definitely one of the sloppy runs. And, yeah, Preston... Getting that left front so, so close to a grass drop there on the inside of turn three. It's close. Yeah, it's something unfortunate. I don't think we could see from our angle. Um, Bouquet, again, like I, I expected him to, if he would have um, just matched his angle turn one, I think we would have seen a different one from Bouquet. The cars that have that much grip, Ian, um, you can't really adjust your angle that much. You kind of have to set it and forget it when it comes to the angle. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he maybe didn't throw as much angles he wanted in turn one, and the cold car is a dumpster to drive at that point. But a lot of these cars, a lot of these cars, are how the way they're set up, set up to drive at max angle and nothing else, um, which is why they're so fast. So yeah, um, we didn't see that from that Ferrari, but Preston not the best run either. So I think it's still lots to talk about here. We could be getting to that point as well with the tire wear. It could start playing a factor in this battle. Second half of OMT number two. Bouquet in the lead this time. Preston and Chase. He's definitely all over the bumper this time. That initiation wants to be aggressive and get it on the door. He's going to do absolutely just that, Keenan. Trying to put his staple on this battle. Hook, line, and sinker to finish this thing out. Oh, he is absolutely making his presence felt in Chase. Bouquet, another solid lead run, but this time Preston. Definitely here for the first half, losing out in the second. The bouquet trying to run away. Small break, check to correct oh. on the exit, but gets it on the door and makes contact. Oh, this could be another interesting point of contention here. That contact at the end may have been caused by the break check in the lead position, but Preston getting very aggressive to finish out that run. Oh boy, this is going to come down to replays. Man, bouquet looked like he just couldn't get that Ferrari out to that outer zone. And again, you were in OMT2. You're in the finals. You have a chance of becoming the overall champion of the year. You're not thinking of things like the guy behind. You're just like, just get to the wall, just get to the wall, just get to the wall. And it almost looked like the same thing happened. Like he got on that curb a little bit and it just wouldn't let him go. And by the time that he was starting to move to the outer zone, <laughs> started to move to the outer zone, um, he wasn't ready for it. And that's why you saw him stand on the brakes. 
Uh, it wasn't sort of some sort of, sort of dirty tactic or anything. It's just, I think, him in a de mode of desperation trying to get that Ferrari out to that wall. Yeah, I don't think Bouquet would have been seen at fault for the contact if it wasn't for the second brake application. You see one to make a correction, then he gets close and slows it down again big. And that's where the slowdown really starts happening there on the exit of the corner. That's where the contact yeah. is made. Uh, it, it was definitely a correction. The first brake application for the second one might have been a little too much. Yeah, hit the brick the first time when I should be all right. And then because these drivers, they're, 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 the mental, mental fortitude of a lot of these guys is, is fast. So you see him hit the brakes the first time, and then I think in his brain he went, ah, oh, it's not going to be enough, is it? Yep. So he hits the brakes again, and he stands on them. He does get out to the wall, but Preston, nowhere to go. Yep, and that is going to be the decision made. JSI Preston will be joining his JSI teammate Mystified in the final for 2019 Esports Drift Association's championship playoff. JSI battle to decide the champion of the 2019 Esports Drift Association. Yep, Ian, I mean... <laughs> I was the best driving we saw from Bouquet all day, but um, unfortunately just left it in the hands of uh, of Preston. And Preston, all he had to do, not to take anything away from Preston's follow run, that follow run was fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic up until that last corner. Gave him a little bit of room, knew, almost like he knew. Very smart driving from Preston, almost like he knew that was, if Bouquet is going to have a weak corner on this track, it is that turn three. Um, but Ian, we're going to see an XE, XE now and JSI versus JSI. Yep. And after this very short break, we're going to be back for the conclusion of the 2019 Esports Drift Association. Who is going to be your 2019 champion? Only one way to find out if you stick around here for the conclusion of this riveting round here at Esports Drift Association.
back then to the final lobby of the 2019 esports drift association championship round this is for all the marbles and typically we would do this in third place going first fashion but unfortunately preston needs to leave so we're jumping straight to the conclusion this is going to be the battle wait a minute I take that back. JSI was on the line, but Dai is actually calling for Exi Bouquet versus JSI Ueno to go yeah, you, first you, here. Yeah, you can't have you can't have the you can't have the uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's weird and I don't like it. Also, I don't like that he's calling Ueno because it's wanted. But alright. Ueno, you're back in, buddy. <laughs> you're back in. Still have a chance. You're still in this. Oh goodness me. Okay, well then. Maxi Bouquet versus Axie he wanted. Or Beesh. All right, so then it's going to be an Axie battle to determine who is going to be your third place finisher in the 2019 campaign of ESCA. And I believe this is going to be Bouquet leading first and Wanted in Chase. And yes, that is going to be correct. Hope you guys have been enjoying what you have seen so far today, guys. And you thought these last couple of battles were the good ones. This is what it all comes down to. This is where it counts. Third place battle. This is fighting for scraps, but still, to call yourself the third place finisher of the 2019 ESCA campaign is a, is a matter of pride. You got to believe these drivers are going to give it their absolute all here, Keenan. Yeah, Ian, there's, I mean, there's, we're not going to have any more drifting, at least at this level, till 2020. So um, we're going to have to this is it now you know no one's going to remember you for playing it safe no one's going to remember you for taking it easy they're only going to remember you if you have to give absolutely everything and that's what these guys have to do i know they're and they're teammates which i was looking into it and i was like ah oh, this kind of you know it's not really good for the for the uh for the <laughs> for the script but um because they're teammates they probably drive against each other all the time we're probably gonna see some of the best battles we've seen all day yeah, these are going to be two. I mean, if uh, Bouquet's OMT tendencies are anything to show for, potentially more battles here for the remainder of the 2019 season. Bouquet in the lead. Wants it in chase. Here's the initiation for that Ferrari up in the lead. The Mustang losing on approximately oh, to start. Not no. aggressive in but dropping a tire onto the green and chase unfortunately bouquet is in another zip code tries to get aggressive to close back in on that proximity through turn two but ultimately that's going to be the causation of a massive loss of proximity through the remainder of the course bouquet on the other hand put down a solid lead in that 599 gto up in the lead not what you want to see out of wanted wanted grabbing that again i just happened to turn my stick on my controller right at the right time to see the one of his front tire in that dirt um unfortunately that second corner uh looked like he was trying to make up a little bit of the gap you see him going center but doesn't kill enough speed and he ends up going really wide on that touch and go which honestly on has the opposite effect it didn't end up gaining him ground to bouquet and ended up making him lose more bouquet all he had to do in that big old boat of a ferrari was just set sail and uh really nothing major out of him just needs to have a consistent and good chase. And I think we could be wrapping up a bronze medal here for himself. Yeah, second half of this battle. Second half of this battle. Wanted in the lead of that Mustang Ford Power. Our final foreign force here. XC Bouquet. Good eye going into turn one. Wanted entering early again. Oh. Bouquet not doing the best job of adjusting to that mistake, but he is going to be able to get into the attack on the second corner. Wanted Man. on the brakes trying to adjust that back of the end of that car. Kind of all over the place from Bouquet, but can't really blame him considering wanted big angle. That Mustang is going to spin. Oh, he he's gone. He spins oh. in the middle and he over rotates on the last corner. <laughs> Normally we like to add suspense to these calls, but yeah. Oh, wanted just, I don't know if it was just the fact that he was sitting, waiting to run a little bit and just was not the wanted that we saw all day. Man. Yeah, Wanted has been really, really shaky in these last couple of lobbies, unfortunately. Just just not there on his game, kind of entering early almost every time he goes into one, over-angling here and there, and, you know, that's just that's a shame. But, yeah, a third-place decision has been made, ladies and gentlemen, but in typical ESCA fashion, we're not going to announce it until later. But uh, I think everyone here... Golly gee, I wonder who it was. Oh, <laughs> so man. that is going to be it for your third-place battle. It is now time for 
the war for the throne. This is going to be JSI Mystified versus JSI Preston to claim it all. Which one of these two drivers are coming out of these next two runs as your ESEA champion of 2019, Keenan? Uh, Ian, we've seen these guys battle before. I've seen them drive together a lot. It's anyone's game. If I had to pick somebody, if you're putting a gun to my head, I think, I think I've seen Misty look a little bit better today than Preston, but by, say, a little bit, I mean by a fraction. Preston has also looked fan-bleeding-tastic throughout the mm -hmm. course of the day. Our number this one and our number two seed. I don't know when the last time this happened. <laughs> this, this is going to be fun, Keenan. This is where it all comes down to your final battle. Both drivers on the line. JSI versus JSI. Ty pulls away. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Your final battle. JSI mystified. JSI Preston for the 2019 championship. Here's the initiation for Mystified. Lots of angle with that S13 up in the lead position. Not quite there in proximity. Chases that R35 and Preston, but flicks it right across the bumper and gets aggressive down the hill. Mystified throwing down the style. Oh, he pulls the sparks across the bumper on Mystified. Getting back in on the door as well. A small mistake being made. Losing out proximity in the bottom half of that run. What a battle on our hands. Preston could not get any closer on that transition in the power alley. Keenan, that was a split hair from disaster. Dude, Zach, you're God. You're an actual <laughs> God. That was, man, with these fast, quick, consistent runs, you usually see maybe a little bit of lack of angle, a little bit of lack of style. That was... That was pretty sick. Not to take anything off of what Preston did. Preston was right there with him, but in that lead position was just something. I very rarely can watch a lead run in Forza, having been around this scene in this game for so long and go, damn, that was fun to watch. <laughs> So, so, something about that battle will get your blood boiling. This is the stuff that we come for through and through. Keenan, this is the final run of 2019, potentially. Potentially the last run of the year, Ian. You are correct. Nissan versus Nissan. JSI versus JSI. Preston, big entry there. Mystified right there with the Mystified trying to back up his regular season championship. Can he be able to do Ooh. that? Big transition across the bumper of that GTR going into the final corner here. Is he going to have the speed of the S13? That SR is at the speed of disadvantage, but he's right there on the door. <laughs> he's grabbing him by the throat saying, not today, kid. This is my championship, and I'm going home with that gold. Oh, but does he have it, though? Because once again in chase, the chase driver washes out wide. Everything about that run was matching to hit for tap. But unfortunately, that last corner, once again, mystified pushing wide, just like what Preston did in his chase. This is going to have to come down to the judging decision. Who do we have a clear winner or are we going OMT? What a battle on our hands. I think it is safe to say we have literally saved the best for last in 2019. Ian, we're going out with a bang, whether that's uh, whether that's Mystified, whether that's Preston, uh, whether that's either of our JSI drivers today. I think we've had some incredible driving again. Only a top 16 um, in today's competition, but just so fantastic the quality of driving even like little mistakes that we've seen i've been oh, oh little tire drop we have no i don't remember seeing we always have some sort of big mistake from one of our drivers not today um but you know preston i want to say preston was a favorite coming into this year um you know he's won championships all over forza uh mystified also this year just grabbed uh lack of a better term grabbed this year by the balls but um <sighs> keenan 2019 ESCA is not over yet. One more time between JSI Mystified and JSI Preston. This championship will not be handed over easily. It is not free. Both these drivers are going to need to do it again as Mystified gets a second chance in that lead position. Preston in chase and that R35 going to have to do it all over once again against the consistency of Mystified. He gets it on the door. He is so aggressive and that cannot get any closer in chase. This is a banger of a battle. Keenan is now a small gap. is starting to be shown as the work going on it to and through the power. Oh, like Preston, you he gets it in just fine. Gets it on the door. He is absolutely matching everything Mystified is doing it this time staying with in that tire track through the exit of turn three. Oh my god the second half of this battle is delivery i can't breathe oh my god <laughs> so what what preston did right yes was he took one of those little three-step step ladders he walked up into the top step and he just slapped mr fight square in the face and said what do you got <laughs> what do you got 
You know, and then now, I think the issue is Mystified, he smells doors, boy. He smells he, them doors. He's gonna have to. He he smell them what, doors. What Preston just did in turn one needs to be matched by Mystified this time, because I think it's safe to say Preston is not gonna be making a mistake no. in this lead. At this point, we gotta assume both these drivers have brought their A game, and if it comes down to those small little minute things, you have to match it. You have to get in. This is for all the marbles, Keenan. Potentially the last run. We need to see something absolutely amazing from Mystified here. Preston, as well, needs to put down a flawless lead run. What are we going to see? Right on the door. Oh, oh, Mystified oh. to be expected. He smelled them doors, boy. Coming into the second half of the run here, we're going to really need to see him close this gap. Coming into the final quarter. Right across the bumper. He's oh. the moving into the last quarter. He doesn't quite have it the same way Preston did, but moving out into that outer zone. Almost there. <laughs> Ian. Oh, this is fire. Holy crap. All right, go back on these replays. Put them side by side once again. Can we even call a winner again? Are we going again? Or do we have a definitive answer? Replays on screen. My hands are so clammy right now, dude. I'm sweaty. Ooh. Needless to say, these are the fire runs of 2019. The only difference I have seen in these runs. Looking side by side. I'm looking at mirrors right now. The proximity is practically the same in every single section. Unbelievable driving with maybe a slight advantage in chase for Preston on the second half of the course. Man. But other than that, how do you call this? Man, this I think it's so coming good. to the judges. I think it's going to come down to the judges and how they view turn three on both their chases. Um, Preston, if you watch Preston, obviously way more hype to watch. But Preston gets close, but he gets a little bit ahead of the S13. And you, there may have been just a little, little kiss. There wasn't. It's not contact. But there is a kiss. Mystified got close, but never made any contact. So they're going to reward uh, the consistency in this and the fluidity of Mystified's driving. Or are they going to reward the balls out driving from Preston? Mm -hmm. Preston definitely being way more aggressive on his throws into the corner. Those are the risky styles that you need to throw to get a win over a teammate that you practice with time and time again. He absolutely wanted to get it on the doors. You can see the aggression on those entries into all corners, turn one especially, turn three even. What a battle. I, I'm with Cubone right now. Can they just both win? This is so good. But unfortunately, we only have one winner, folks. I could honestly see them going again, too, the more I, I watch I, this. Yeah. Because anytime, like, ooh, you know, maybe Preston wasn't as close to Mystified in there. Mystified is closer on that point of the of the issue. I'm like, oh, well, maybe Mystified, Mystified, you know, wasn't as close in turn three. Um, Prestified's pushing him through the corner. Uh, did I say Prestified? You I said Prestified. Yes, you did. did. Prestified. Okay, oh, cool. I'm going to go I'm gonna go cry in my laundry room. I'll talk to you guys later. Um, yeah, Prest Preston is trying to end this because he's got to go somewhere. You know? This is, when Man. I say this is the pinnacle of drifting in video games, in gaming, <clears throat> uh, I think this is the run that I'm going to have to show people. Mm -hmm. I'm, really, I'm really happy that we didn't end the season on a technicality. We didn't end the season on uh, a tire drop. Oh my god, could you believe that? Um, we're seeing some of the best drifting we've seen all year. I don't want to get out ahead of myself and say this is the best battle of the year. But God golly gosh, considering all of the pressure and all of what's going, oh my God, boys. We have a decision, and not even I have been told this decision. Ladies and gentlemen, I am just as edge of the seat as you are. Die yeah, instructing both no drivers I have to no line clue. them up. I, I genuinely have no idea how you call this, Keenan. I am right with you on this one. Usually there is a slight favor in almost every call that we get where we can almost guess it ourselves, but this time... I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't know who has this, dude. This is great. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for your continued support this season. We really, really do appreciate everyone out there in chat who's been here all season long and supporting what we do. If you want to see more exciting drift action, please hit that follow button if you have not already. You're crazy if you haven't, because next year is going to be fire. I yeah. can promise you that Absolutely. much. Drivers have brought their A game in a way I have never seen before in my life. It's only been getting better every year, Ian, and this year was to another level. Before we get into the decisions here, I personally just want to say thank you to Podium Esports. Podium Esports absolutely stepped up and brought us, again, you're, you're relatively new to this. Podium Esports is new to this. I've been in this game a long, long, long time, and we're at a level now that we have not even been close to being been at. So I want to thank you, everybody on the media side, Podium, Scorp, 
Uh, I want to thank you all the staff, the judges, anyone making tunes, posting those tunes. But a lot of work for a lot of months from a lot of people. And uh, I think, honestly, coming here at the end of the year, I think it all paid off. and We created something beautiful. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a decision on that championship final. But we're not giving it to you yet because we still have to tell you who has won the third place battle. Ladies and gentlemen, after what you just saw, it should probably come as not a surprise to anybody, especially after what happened in turn four. Ladies and gentlemen, your third place finisher of the 2019 Esports Drift Association is... <laughs> X-E Bouquet is your third place finisher. He will just barely... It just, it just, wait, I'm not going to say just barely. He was definitely through and through the better of the two. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think Preston is here right now to actually line no, it up at the bottom of the thing. hill. So he, he, he's not so going to know the call. <laughs> so, so, so Preston is not at the bottom of the hill for the call. All right. Well, here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. Your 2019 Esports Drift Association Championship competitor who was walking away from this one with the win from JSI. Huh. He was driving a Nissan. I'm not going to do this to you. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in their careers, give it up for JSI Preston. He is your 2019 Esports Drift Association champion in that R35. One hell of a drive. JSI Preston, your 2019 champion, Keenan. That was a banger. Yeah, I, they rewarded. I guess the judges rewarded that aggressive driving from Preston. Preston, not necessarily known for his follow runs, uh, definitely shut a lot of people up today. Um, man, enjoy your wedding, man. I would say have a couple of drinks there, but I know you're like 12. So I mean, <laughs> have, have a couple of orange juices or whatever you people drink. Um, absolutely worked hard all season. Uh, other than Mystified, of course, who's the person that... Um, who won the regular season one of the most dominant runs throughout the season that we saw second two three technically three wins now and a second place um excellent driving from preston um and had to take mystified to his absolute limit unfortunately mystified this is not his year but um when it comes to competitive ian i think that was maybe the best i've seen mystified drive in years Congratulations mm -hmm. to him as well. He's got to hold his head up high, being our regular season champion as well. Um, Bouquet looks like the car choice paid off for him, grabbing a bronze. Um, but I mean, Preston put a exclamation point on his season today, and I'm sure he's going to be able to enjoy that wedding a little bit more. What a thrilling way to end the 2019 ESCA campaign, Keenan. That was just the battle of the year. It was funny earlier we were kind of contemplating what was the battle of the year. Well, we, it, it comes down to literally the final battle. I can definitively say that was just the battle of the year and, and, and excitement, consistency, and just the, the, the sheer amazement of what these drivers have in the talent pools. Unbelievable. JSI has to be so proud right now of their stable, of their drivers, being able to do these things and just absolutely take it to everybody today congratulations to all of you and most of all jsi pressing congratulations your 2019 esda champion i believe preston is no longer with us so i don't think we can get that Rest championship in interview in today with him but when we come back well actually hold on i don't hello, think hello hello anywhere. hello all right we will go ahead and actually get on to your second place finisher actually it's kind of weird having a an esda champion and, and not even be able he's to ask first in my questions. heart it's all good it's fine <laughs> well ladies and gentlemen he got oh so close but was just barely and i mean 51 to 49 just, just barely missing barely out on that esca out. championship and jsi mystified congratulations hello, hello, hello. on just a, a great season all in all obviously falling just a little bit short where it mattered but you know just just talk me through what it meant to you to absolutely take it to what was going on there in the final battle because you know preston second seed coming into this one he was definitely giving you your stiffest competition and just falling a little bit short it has to sting a little bit but i'd imagine you're pretty proud yeah man i'm i'm pretty excited i did pretty good this uh this season i, I got a lot of podiums um most of the events i did i podiumed and uh I'm, I'm pretty excited. Preston did a good job. Uh, we kind of had to rush the battles a little bit because Preston had to go somewhere uh, and make it to a, like a wedding real quick, which is kind of important. So he, uh, he's we getting married. Good quick. for him. <laughs> yeah, good for him. Good Woo. for him. He's getting married. But, uh, but yeah, man, it was, it was a good battle. Everyone did good. 
um, all the XC dudes, they fucking drive like maniacs. They're fucking crazy. One, it's a fucking beast, and Buckets hey, is hey. a really, really snappy beast. <laughs> this is a, this is a, a Christian channel. Mist Mystify, calm down. <laughs> Man, it, it's right. crazy. It's crazy Dude, out like, there, I, I, I would imagine, like, you, you know, a, a driver of, of, of your caliber... You know, and the way that you you do these things in and out, like you know, I would like to say that the nerves probably did not play a factor, but I I think you'd be lying if you said you weren't nervous at all this round, man. Just coming into this round, you know, what what was the mood like in the JSI camp? What was it like for you? And and do you think, you know, there 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 was like any way you could have handled that better, or do you think just pressing straight out out drove you at your best? What what do you, what do you think it's going to take to maybe have to take him down in 2020 to grab that championship? Um, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be back in 2020. I've been playing Forza for a very, very long time. I think this is I think this is where I'm going to call it, but uh, I'm not too sure yet. But uh, Preston, me and Preston had a little uh, friendly feud going on within the team about this round. He told me he was going to out-qualify me, so I had to do that and uh, beat him in that. And I told him I was going to beat him in this too, but I just came up a little bit short. And I mean, I put it I put it out there, and I think I did pretty good for, for driving the car that I did throughout the season against a bunch of r35s and mustangs and camaros and whatnot but uh i mean i'm pretty i'm pretty happy and i'm glad i'm everybody on my team did good too so i just wanted to like shout out everybody on jsi man these guys are insane they grind so hard it they're they're awesome dudes they did a great job this season it was a lot of fun getting the opportunity to watch you and JSI grow as a team this year and definitely step yourself up as like the, 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 the pinnacle team of ESGA. And it was an absolute pleasure to, to, to get to witness like just that, that final battle and all. Keenan and I were losing our minds. Like that was just unbelievably amazing to watch. I want to thank you and everybody at JSI for all, all you've done this year. And I really, really hope this wasn't the end for you, man. But if it was, you know, congratulations on, on, on just a, a really, really solid drift career over here in Forza. And we you know we hope to see you again sometime soon, man. Well, thank you. Thank you guys very much. You guys did very good as well with your announcing and everything. It's awesome. You guys kill that. All right. Well, that was your 2019 second place finisher in the championship round. JSI mystified falling just a little short, Keenan. All it took was, and, and you know what was wild? We were saying earlier in, in the day that it was going to be the mistakes that defined who wins and who didn't win the championship. Nope. But in this situation, it was literally just who outdrove who on their a game that is just exactly the way you'd want to finish out a season mm -hmm. i mean like i like it like um like you said ian in terms of how i'd want the season end i was scared oh man someone's gonna like a tire drop or something silly um but we saw an absolute dog fight a fist fight for the ages i'm sure that mystified will be getting char his charges to his home uh for beating up a child at any time now um but we something also like have <laughs> we also have the Third place finisher for the year, X E Bouquet. Good eye, my I gone. Oh, going all right. I, I'm really surprised you didn't have a comment for me for that. <laughs> um, so first of all, just out of my own morbid curiosity, you look so good in the Mustang all year. What was your thought process to go? I need to switch to Ferrari for that last round. Yeah, well, it was something different. Just thought I'd do something else at that point. Settled on something that i've used before i never remember, I remember you you have driven was it the gto or was it the 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 one with the wing was it that one or was it the one above that that you were used to drive the gto the other one it's got race tires right <laughs> well yeah the xx okay yeah i don't know why i'm dumb and i thought that was okay um and obviously you get you got a bronze medal today you ended up finishing third overall for the year congratulations um do you think that choice paid off for you are you happy about that uh and just in terms of um how far the mustang would have taken you or do you think the ferrari was the right call um it, it's a bit of both of me not knowing how to drive the car and me not prepping the car well enough there was a lot of hit and miss throughout the entire event, not going to lie. I mean, you can't have a lot of misses. You ended up third overall for the year. <laughs> I mean, you can't, can't even win all that bad. Um, and in terms of a season, man, um, how do you, how do you feel coming off of this? And then what is your, um, you know, we heard from Mystify that he's not sure where his 2020 future is going to be. What, do you, what are the plans for you for, uh, for ESDA 2020? Uh, sit back, relax, and wait till the next one comes around and... Uh, rinse and repeat from last season. I mean, I, I mean, like, 
in, in terms of, of, of somebody who's known you for a long time and a fan um, from this as well, um, your driving today was absolutely fantastic. You did really, really good, especially in a car that you haven't competed in all year. I know it's something that you're comfortable and you're used to, but to, to get competitive to that level and guys who've been driving the same car literally all year in terms of mystified for like the past 15 years, however old that dude is. Um, so congratulations. I think you did really well. Um, uh, and you have something really to carry momentum in the next season. And uh, thanks for putting on a show today. Yep. All good. Good job, Bucket. Good job. I love you. I love you, Bucket. <laughs> all right, there, Mr. Vine. Oh gosh! Well, that was your third place finisher, Xy Bouquet. Was it's that's the way you want to end your season, honestly. Like you can have some hit or misses throughout the entirety of the season, but to sit there and and still come out strong and swinging hard, nonetheless, really throwing down some of the the best battles of the day. You know, it was it, it was so much fun to watch. I thoroughly, thoroughly did enjoy watching Bouquet work his way through the bracket today and and coming on strong at the end. So props to you. Congratulations on that third, and I really hope to see. Uh, your success continue on into later campaigns. Got one more person we actually want to speak to real quick. Uh, UNK Scorpion. What are you doing in here? Oh, this guy again. <laughs> what are you doing in here? <laughs> I just wanted to crawl in here to say hello. <laughs> uh, well, Scorpion providing a lot of the, the later season uh, media stuff. And I just want to get your, your input on this season because you've been sitting here watching almost everything throughout the entirety of ESCA's you know existence and and needless to say this round delivered in ways that I, I could not have ever expected coming into it especially yeah. that final score oh it, it bloody delivered I've delivered I'll tell you that right now I'm just absolutely stoked I it's a shame I wasn't able to um wake up early in the morning enough my phone decided to fail me and go an hour later for the alarm it's like it's like nah Nah, yeah, no. I wonder who would do that. Who would sleep through <laughs> their alarm? Who, who in the? It was me. I did. That. No, it was actually I didn't sleep through my alarm. My alarm just happened to be on the wrong time. I was meant to wake up an hour earlier than I was, oh, but it decided to not set it to the right time. You hate to see it. But I think the only bloody tool is me that that screwed up. Well done, me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um. But yeah, um, I'll just I'll just love to say, um, really love the opportunity I got given to actually um, edit for you guys. I'm definitely coming back next year. You'll be seeing me again. <laughs> I'll yeah, be, I um, sure hope so. Doing some juicy editing for you guys once again. It was an absolute pleasure, honestly. Yeah, no, it, it was super fun to have that. And honestly, everybody who had their hand in this 2019 campaign for the Esports Drift Association delivered in troves. It was an absolute pleasure of mine, and I'm sure Keenan can, can feel the same way about this one, to get the chance to, to work with everyone here in the Esports Drift series and just, just, just really thoroughly enjoy the season for what it was from start to finish. Quality battles, quality driving, quali quality broadcast. Even Cisco's got a news of Podium Esports just delivering all the way from the get the oh you know we, we really do appreciate everything you have done today and the entirety of the season scorp thank you so much for swinging by and talking with us for a little bit we gotta wrap this thing up my guy and before we do that james pike first time sitting in with us for a esports trip association broadcast are we gonna be seeing pike in the booth next year maybe oh gosh i mean there's there's gonna be a lot more going on at podium in 2020 in addition to esca so uh, i would say keep your ears and eyes peeled to the podium esports social media channels and the website and the twitch channel for more info but yeah no i the one thought that i have you know i i, I almost tend to disagree with both you and keenan a little bit i actually thought that uh, just Preston's chase. I, I saw that and compared it to Mystifies, and I was like, you know, like this might actually not be as close as we think it is. I kind of think he might just have it. So that's sort of the hunch that I have with the judges. I think that's probably the way they leaned. But in either case, it was still insane to watch. I figure we're going to have more of this next year, and we just got to figure out where we're going and what game we're using, I guess, since uh, we also probably need to say our uh, pay our respects to Force of Seven, too, I suppose. Yeah, we're getting there. I think eight's not going to be coming out for a little while longer. So if it all lines up, I believe we got one more season left on Forza Motorsport 7. And speaking of Podium Esports, guys, we got a couple things coming up in the next weeks. So don't forget, we have more racing action coming up for you within this next week on the Podium Esports Network. iRacers Lounge Podcast Oval Series at Dover International Speedway on October the 6th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Stock Car Challenge Series powered by iRacing Flag, Road Atlanta. Well, actually, no, that is 
an earlier date. Excuse how, me. How, how about you let me know? That's you what know I'm what? Saying. How about we, how about we let Pike do his job here? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll <laughs> help him. That, that's my baby. So, uh, Podium Esports Twitch channel Sunday night. We've got the Irish Lounge Podcast Oval Series from Dover. They go race at Dover in real life that afternoon. We go there that evening. We're going to be using the same time in sim and same date that they use in real life. First time we've had that happen on any Podium Esports race whatsoever. So it could be fun to see how the conditions we get in sim mirror whatever they get in real life i've heard there's supposed to be a lot of clouds in dover this weekend but in either case you can catch us on the twitch channel 8 30 p.m eastern tomorrow night to see uh, what most people know is the xfinity and the truck machines what we know is the class b and class c cars and trucks go at it from dover should be a lot of fun and i'll be there along with taylor burris for the call and don't forget we also have the pca sim racing series on october the 18th at the canadian tire motorsports park and the Gaming Drift Series returning on October the 12th at Autopolis. You want some more drifting action for the fans out there? That's where you're going to get it over here on Gran Turismo Sport. That's what's coming up here in the coming weeks over for the Podium Sports Network. Again, we appreciate everybody out here who has tuned in throughout the entirety of this year. Keenan, final thoughts before we wrap this thing up. Ian, we've been doing this for a long I've been doing this for a long time. I've seen the we come from the days of corner judging where we have judges sit on the corners, uh, where the infancy of, of live streaming um, in terms of uh, for competitions where there was no commentary. We were just streaming it so people could get a second opinion on judging. Uh, I remember when follow judging and, and doing the way we do now was controversial and everyone hated it i've been around here for a long time and i am so hopeful and so full um of uh i don't say hope again but i can't i can't wait for the future of this because every time every year every round every season gets better and better and better and more professional and more serious um like we had more almost we for most of our broadcasts we had similar viewers or more viewers than forza rc so i mean i understand they're on mixer but um you know the future looks bright and i'm so excited to be a part of it and i'm glad that we get to take you and podium along for the ride this has been nothing but a pleasure and i am so thankful to have been a part of it guys on behalf of everyone over at podium esports the east sports trip association staff drivers sponsors uh forza uh, motorsport 7 formula drift uh, turn 10, just everyone who had their hand in the season, we greatly appreciate your support. We could not have done it without you. This has been a pleasure, and I cannot wait for what 2020 has to store. Take care, everybody. Your 2019 Esports Drift Association champion is JSI Preston. We will see you in 2020 for more exciting Esports Drift Association drift action. Have a great night and have a great rest of your afternoon. Wherever you are tuning in today, please stick around. We are raiding Rents the Fence over on Twitch. Be sure to send him a lot of our love from the Esports Drift Association for all of us. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.